Hello everyone and welcome to the Immortal Break the Game Weekly number 23. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fear, whichever you prefer, and this week I'm all alone. It's just me. But, unlike me, all the players have teams, because this is the Teams Week. First up, we're going to have a team match, well, it's all the team matches. Team of Santa Claus and Lightforger, also known as the Walter Team, against Drago and Wajizo, or Dragon Zoo. Gonna get a huge amount of players this week, but, you know, eight players, four teams. Actually pretty good, all things considered. Outside of the bracket, Magical Hydraulics, who have decided to go unnamed. Up against Golden Entropy, which is Entropy, a very new player, and Mr. Kareem, who we've seen on streams before. So I might be able to catch them, possibly in the losers, possibly losers finals, we'll see what happens. For now, though, we are into the, ma well, we'll soon be into the match proper. It's kind of a bunch of players that are very familiar. Santa. Santa and Lightforger as a team together is a little unusual. We haven't seen that. I don't think at all, actually. Let me double check. I have a list of things. We have not Lightforger with the Hydraulics on the last week's, or last time, the last 2 t tournament, which was the, the big Alpha Trials. New team. It's kind of cool. Sorry, I'm trying to deal with... Please excuse me. I need I'm dealing with admin as well this week, so if things are a little bit like if I'm feel, like kind of quiet not doing a whole lot, it's because I'm trying to deal with some of the admin stuff as well. Please bear with me. This will only be a problem in between matches. During the game, totally focused on the game. Okay, well, anyway, I'm, I'm going to need to take a break to get water out of this match, but that's I'll probably survive this match without water. Sorry, I'm getting really into the weeds of what's going on. I just yeah. Yeah, like I said, a lot of stuff to deal with, so. Alright, well, let's get into the game itself. Where... Ah, yes, Sand and Lightforge are both going double Zul. I don't know if I want to spoil what's going to happen, but Sand has been messing around quite a bit with some... Some changes. There were some changes to Zol, like Zol, the immortal Zol, that you can summon with the ability to summon the immortal Zol, where they now deal a lot more damage against big things. So, Santa, well, everyone but Drago really, is very much in a position where they can just start, like, mowing down big things, like bases, for instance, using Zol. A little bit harder in 2v2, mind you, obviously 2v2 and 1v1 bit of a different dynamic, but yeah, it's... Zol's per Zol has a percentage damage now, which Santa's found some room to exploit, and which is, like, the thing they're going to be able to do for this tournament. Probably not much longer, but that's going to be a thing. So it's it's going to be... It could be a wild game or a wild few games. Lightforger definitely going in the direction of I'm just going to knock yourself, knock your base down. With a bunch of units. Man's all. And so. Not really thinking that from the looks of it. Santa's going for more just. Seems almost distraction, honestly. Kind of the classic approach of build up a bit more tech oriented thing. I think early expansion, early tech. Although not as much tech. Possibly early as it calls, but really not anywhere near the level of. Of focus oh, that. What's going to happen? <sighs> just. Well, everything's going wrong today. I try to keep a professional stream, but apparently I cannot allow to do that today. Anyhow, with the... What was I going to say? Oh, yeah, right. So, yeah, Draco's got to be scared. Got to be worried. Got to make sure they're... I don't think be scared, but they got to be... Be aware of the fact that Lightforger and Santa are trying to basically checkmate them in terms of how their bases are. Although not going super aggressively. Santa's definitely building up for it a bit more of a safe way than they would in 1v1. And Zoe is not even doing that. They're they're going for a very vanilla play. They're not even focusing on this at all. They, they don't seem to have really much thought to, oh, let's just go knock things down. They want to play the later game. Which, I mean, they might be able to. There's been more time for them to build up a response to getting attacked early. It's really, it's what, it can, what it's going to come down to is can Lightforger and Santa Claus 
take advantage of the Zol changes before Drago and Zo build up an army to stop them. Like, to just deflect whatever they throw. Which, even then, is still tricky, because throughout the game, we're going to be seeing a lot of additional harassment to try to take out the the Acropolises, take out well, the outposts, as they're called now, the, the main building that you built up to gather resources from. I do expect to see quite a lot of that, and yeah, there is... Yeah, there's the percentage damage. The third, every third attack, it's just... It's... It's a lot. Not to mention the army in general. This is a lot. This is... This is Sand and Life Order's big push. If they get this... If, I mean, the, yeah, force them to cancel. Drago is... Mostly prepared. Zoe coming in to help out. But... San and Lightforge knew exactly what they wanted from this, and they are not slowing down. Regrouping. Try to get in a position to keep Drago's defenders from actually getting the drop on them. Though Drago, with the Absolver here, does have a bit of an ace in the hole. San and Lightforge on the low ground, struggling to deal with that defensive position. Deciding to just take the loss. Take the hits, not the loss of the game, but the loss of those units. Unfortunately, Santa losing all those anti- These are the anti-air units they have. This, like, Drago actually has a bit of an advantage now, having wiped out most of the ability for Santa to slow them down, or to stop their defenses. And so far, Team Fire is holding. Team Fire is holding really well, in fact. Drago and Zoe are on- or Dragon Zoo. Holds the line. While the Walter team isn't even able to summon Zol effectively in the first place. Getting a tower and nothing else. Even split on the Pyrocost, really. In the meantime, the Dragon Zoo, they're setting up an expansion. They've got their destruction. The only thing they lost was a forward base. and They had to cancel the expansion, but Drago, they, they didn't lose that much money. So honestly, Dragon Zoo has a significant advantage now. The, the way this strategy has gone in 1v1, I expect Walter team to be going in for Thrums, which they are. So we're probably going to see, we're going to see Thrums. What we would see one of them for sure is Thrums coming in, attacking the Acropolis directly, using that as, as a distraction, or the outposts directly, using that as a distraction, which then allows either summoning Zol or summoning Zol on one of the bases while the Thrums destroy another. That's what San is going for. Lightforger, on the other hand, is playing the long game. Focusing more on tech and defense than they are on actual, on getting the big deadly harassment force, leaving that to Santa. Thrums have been revealed. Dragon Zoo, if they set up the right defenses, if they set up enough Erevors, upgrade splash damage, Erevors and or Fire Singer, upgrade splash damage, and they could. Drago is set up to get Fire Singers. This is actually not a dire situation. Dragon Zoo just needs to have the defenses in place before they actually run into trouble. Interestingly, Light Fortress has already kind of beaten them to that punch. And Santa is going to be coming into a completely undefended base. Zol summon or no, Santa is in an amazing position to start wrecking all of this economy. Bone Stalkers from Wajazo able to force a retreat. But this is a battle of attrition. So long as so long as the Walter team can keep pressure on Dragon Zoo, they can eventually threaten Zol summon or just destruction of the outposts without anything to really stop them. Because there's no static defense. Everything's going to be just down to whether or not those Bone Stalkers are in the right place at the right time. And they can only move so fast, and they can't move in the air. That being said, Drago does have an answer. The answer will keep Santa at bay. And all this time, Santa and Lightforger, they are expanding. It's not just the harassment game, but that harassment game is the constant threat. It's Dragon Zoo, dealing with okay. Bigger question is how they actually get the counterattack in there, because... They've held off. Dragon Zoo is defended. 
they're fine. But can they push back Walter Team? Can they put Walter Team in a position where they actually are losing resources? Because so far, Walter Team, they haven't broken much, but they have been consistently grabbing more and more territory. They've been getting more and more resources. So this is not going... The momentum is still in their favor. Dragon Zoo has some options to deal with this. I mean, they're getting decent tech. They have... They have an army, but that army is just not up to snuff size-wise. And again, Zola coming in here, wiping out yet another one of Dragon Zoo's towers. Why is over spawning in kind? But that's not going to work out well for them. That they don't have... They're, they're not attacking a giant thing with a ton of HP. They're attacking smaller forces that they don't have the damage on. And there's the opening. Santa taking it. Looking to break down all of the inside bases. Drago able to defend reasonably well on the front lines, but those thrums, those are the real killer. Those thrums separating out Dragon Dragon Zeus forces, keeping Santa and Life Forger from. Well, I mean, they are still defending reasonably okay, but Walter Team, again, they don't really care so long as they can keep that pressure on. And with that, maintain their expansions. And just sooner or later, there's going to be the point where they can come in, where Walter Team can come into a point, to some area that's relatively undefended for the time, set up Zol, and then get a kill on the outposts. Both of them could do that. And then it's just their opponent has half as many bases. Intelligently, though, Drago going to expand at the corners. Unfortunately, the timing, it could not be worse. Walter team going in for the attack with Zoe being the only defender. 2v1. Zoe valiantly defending it. Having the high ground on their side. But not much else besides buying enough time for Drago to get back in here. The Thrums coming through and Lightforger summoning Zol. They got an eye on that Grove Heart. And they want it dead. Zol doesn't get killed inside in the next 10 seconds. That Grove Heart's done. Zolt barely taken out, but the Thrums are still a threat. Not enough to defend all the anti-air. Too far out of position. And that Acropolis still goes... Or that Grover Arthur still goes down. Why is Zolt moving to rebuild? But that's significant chunk of change that got expanded. Just to keep that base alive. Or, well, just keep that base occupied. I mean, it got killed. That happened. Santa Claus and Light Forger with complete map control, and that's all they really need. They can maintain map control and maintain knowledge of where their opponents are going. Like, they're going to take care of this rock. Well, where's the anti-air? There's one sentinel? Yeah, this is still map control completely in Walter Team's favor. Dragon Zoo... They're okay, like, they're winning-ish the battles, they're counting Imperial imperial victories on these battles, they're not really getting ahead. Constantly, Santa is keeping Drago from helping the teammate, keeping Wajizo in 2v1 situations. And in all this time, of course, Walter team builds up, tech up, they get more bases, they get more economy. They're keeping their opponents contained. The soft contained, but they're still keeping them contained. Dragon Team looking to break out as Walter Team is now flush with Pyre. Dragon Team getting a 2 one surround on Lightforger's forces. Lightforger can retreat into the choke point, then that's it for Dragon Zoo's ability to apply pressure. Again, Santa Claus and Lightforger do not need to move in too hastily. So long as they can keep Dragon Zoo from doing any significant damage to their own economy, it's just a gradual, it's like slow, gradual chipping away of their opponent's forces, gradually hitting Acropolises that are weak, and keeping their opponent from really doing much at all. Worst case scenario for Dra for Walter Team, have to wait until about the 25 minute mark, and then Dragon Zoo will have mined out. But Beers don't need to do that. Zolvers are the only things keeping Drago alive. 
And alive, they keep them. But those are getting picked away. If those those are gone, then there's nothing really stopping Walter James' forces from just walk, waltzing into this base. Everything else simply is not significant enough to be a threat. So, looking to surround Light Fortress Army, this would push back Walter James' timetable. Dragon Zoo using this opportunity to break out. Engaging in a couple separate 1v1s. Zo coming to support Drago. Drago getting the surround on Santa Claus, keeping them, destroying most of their army. Santa Claus able to keep some of the behemoths alive, but their ground forces are gone. Now, significant reduction in Walter Team's forces. Dragon Zoo going for a second 2v1. They have gotten softened up in the meantime. This is a risky move. Light Fortress sets up another Zul summon. I recommend as well to thin out the soften up forces. Zo forced to retreat their army simply too frail. The numbers are there, the HP pools are not. Walter team maintains the dominance they've had and amplifies it, providing even more anti air dominance. Get rid of a couple of wraiths. And now, Dragon Zoo may remain stuck. They managed to get a single alloy only expansion, but they remain stuck. Like, Dragon Zoo's got, like... Do they even have a Hail Mary Pass at this point? They, the one thing they do have, they have been consistently able to keep le, keep Walter Team's army at bay. So if Dragon Zoo can maintain that, do some, get some extra expansions themselves, they're going for the southeast, they should be able to set up from that. Dragon Zoo might be able to get the army needed to actually take out the Walter Team's army. But now, so we're going we're gonna to see this all summon here. Almost certainly. If not, just the Thrums doing their damage. But Zoe's main base, it's undefended. The Bone Stalker's forced to separate, which means there is once again an opening. Light Forger posturing to take it. But that's the opening. That's the opening they need. And then, with the extra Pyre, it's just a matter of time before... We get more Soul Summons coming through from Walter Team, and Dragon Zoo will once again have to be forced back into the base, forced to cancel their thirds, forced to retreat to the high ground. Although, why does Zoe going for a counterattack? Why would Reapers as well to help? I mean, hey, if you if you have a unit that can deal a ton of damage to buildings, so can why does Zoe? Actually, why does Zoe is also playing Zoe, so they actually do just straight up have that option. First major blow to Walter Team economically. Dragon Zoo fending off a 2v1, or both attacking, taking care of base and fending off a 2v1 simultaneously. The Drago is taking significant losses as a result. They're at their home base. They have that advantage. Why does Zoe be able to stop another Zul summon? Keeping Light Forger from taking out their thir their newly built third. Dragon Zoo just gradually grabbing more and more of the map, and Walter Team's about 10 minutes away from being mined out. Dragons, okay! Center of the map coming through. Dragon Zoo, gotta be a bit careful tactically, but if they get rid of the behemoths, then the Walter Team won't have a whole lot of options. Unfortunately, not enough land here for Dragon Zoo. And it is a surround. Santa able to push back, knocking Dr knocking Drago back. Why does though out of position to help here? And Light Forger. Once they see Why though moving, they're gonna be going in. It's either two v one against Drago or Why is gonna be surrounded. But Dragon Zoo may have overextended. Walter Team is just. Just, just poking around. Just barely wants to know, like, is this going to be the time? Is this the, is this when it'll work? Lightforge going for it. Forcing retreat, opening up the third. Santa with a surround, 2v1 on wide, just though Drago out of position to help, but quite frankly doesn't have the forces. Getting intercepted by Santa's behemoths. Why does those third goes down. Lightforge continuing the press while Santa able to intercept and take out significant chunks of Drago's army. Why does though 
Holding the high ground, but not to much avail. The only advantage they have... Got a lot of area of effect damage. It's just... Not much use of a force multiplier when you haven't got much of a force. Dragon Zoo, they've lost... They, they lost a lot. They lost the gains. They had the third over up front. The third alloy only for both of them. That have been taken out. And now... Walter team... Just needs to find that one last good hit. It's again, Thrums coming around the back. Watch as though just barely getting the Aerovores up at the right-ish time. Although, these Thrums are still dead. <laughs> Sam is going to try to micro it around, but no, these, these Thrums are dead. The Thrum threat has at least been removed for now. But that's a minor threat. That's like, okay, that's that's a way of maybe getting a checkmate situation. It's not gonna matter. If they if Walter Tim can make this push work, then it's over. Walter Team absolutely getting a significant advantage in this press. Natural base going down for Wajazo. though. Fence is coming in, and no, that is it! GG from Dragon Zoo. Walter team takes game one. Slow but certain pressure off of the back of Zol being kind of silly at the moment. Not gonna lie, like Zol Zol right now is a bit silly. I will say, like Dragon team did a Dragon Zoo did a great job of holding the line. Like it's it is worth noting they at least held for a reasonable amount of time, but ultimately. Not being able to expand means there's not really a way for that to to work. Well, now it's up to Dragon Zoo. What map they want next? All right, I need to get some water. Please bear with me for one second. All right, so we're gonna be back to the old standby, Lost Province, by request of Drago and Zoo. Oh man, needed that water. All right, so we already saw that Sand and Light Forger definitely take advantage of Zul's position, and the strategy they're using, or that we're going for before, definitely has a place in Lost Province. I mean, there's a lot of dead space in Lost Province near the expansions, or, well, the southwest main base, the orange main base, so why does main base is going to be pretty vulnerable to air approaches, which then means it's going to be very vulnerable to getting hit by, a little vulnerable to getting hit by the by the thrums coming in and then possibly something is all behind that a little bit less vulnerable for drago that's the one thing that's going to be worth noting same time zoe still went for zol they might i mean, think they know that zol has a does significant damage to buildings. They might try to go for... I know they were trying to go for it earlier. They mentioned something about that in the chat afterwards. They were trying to go for a base hit. So it's not unknown to them. Though again, Santa... Santa and Lightforger... Oh, wow, they're going hard with this. Lightforger with a little more tech, but... So Walter team going f all in with bon Mass Bone Stalker. Or Mo Mass Bone Stalker is a call potentially with Light Forger going for the call. And that's the thing. It's just mass typically Mass Bone Stalker attack in, summon Zol as extra support and also to help get rid of the base. And then you essentially checkmate them. You either, you either kill Zol and the Bone Stalkers take out your outpost, or you kill the Bone Stalkers and Zol takes out your outpost. That's how it tends to go. Why does though is at least going to have some level of preparation, but it is... It's honestly behind. It's... They're going to have some. They're not going to have a whole lot. If they respond in micro perfectly pulling workers, they should survive an early rush. An early Bone Stalker rush with Zol support. But if they don't, then it's going to end pretty quick. That's going to be the real question here. Is Dragon Zoo able to muster their defenses in time? Because don't forget, it's not just a matter of making sure that they block up the front. 
This scout here provides the vision needed to summon Zul. So, Sanic just pulled the scout back in here, summons Zul, hit this from behind, and while the forces in front are dealing with the Bone Stalkers, Zul is wiping out one of the Grove Hearts, one of the two outposts that Wajizo has built up. Santa already in position. Light Forager regrouping. Push is imminent. Drago and Wajizo, they have stack defense. They have a bit of a bit of an army. But the question is, is it enough? Is it enough of an army? Especially as this contain, if nothing else, Walter team has secured a contain. Watch this though. Catching wise. Gets rid of the scout. Smart move. Very smart move. That prevents the checkmate scenario I was talking about earlier. Which means the only concern now is going to be the front lines. And then potential... Well, obviously expansion and tech behind this. And then from there... If... Santa or Life Forger gets thrums. Which Santa is going for. For the time being, though, there is no threat of Zol being summoned in Dragon Zoo's back line. Right. Drago preparing for the possibility of Thrums. Why is Zo is a little bit less concerned? Actually, what is it focusing on? Because they're not building much. Tech's not there. They're not getting a whole lot of units. The Okay, Drago at least is here. No, there's... Okay, why is this still here? Yep, they're, they're still in the game. They're just focused on some other part of the game space than building up their army. Because this is the main chance. This is the time that that Dragon Zoo has before Walt's team is able to get vision of their base from behind. The more that Dragon Zoo can build up a defensive force, the harder it'll be for Walter Team to just sneak Zol in and have it do enough damage. If Dragon Zoo can deal with both Zol and the Bone Stalker simultaneously, then there's no checkmate. It's just, it's all upside for Dragon Zoo. Of course, the contain is still the contain. Like in all this time, San is still expanding. Light Forger has just gotten their natural. Like, the contain has absolutely been successful in giving Santa and Lightforger a position to take map control, which they are now taking advantage of. Because that is kind of the point of contains. You want to make sure that your opponent is unable to roam the map. Which means that, yeah, you might gamble away a little bit of map control early on, or might gamble away a bit of damage early on. But you get the map later. Of course, the question is, will that matter? Thrums come in. No anti-airs available, save for the Erevor. Bone Stalkers from Wajizo. Those will defend well enough. San... Testing the waters. Doesn't want to drop this all in quite yet. They have... A... Walter Team has pivoted hard into economy. Both, double, both players double expanding. Having secured the contain, realizing there's not a whole lot that their opponents can do. Not entirely true, mind you. I mean, Double Warden here is definitely putting a lot of that. And actually, if Watchesdo had enough Pyre, they could start... They could summon Zol and take this expansion for free. But having triple expanded... Or having double expanded each, it's... It'll take a little while for Walter Team to get their army back on track, which means Dragon Zoo does have the opportunity to muster enough of an army to push back this expansion... This, not this expansion, this... Stag defense contain, while an issue, no, it's only going to be so effective. Especially with wardens coming in, pulling opponents away. Bone Stalker still being a bit of a pain, but Lightforger basically getting surrounded out here. Ah, no, right, the Underspines hit it, hit up. Can't forget that. They hit up and they slow down. Lightforger. <laughs> Okay, Life Forge is actually in a really good position. What am I saying? This is this is a tough contain to break. You, like, they'd have to go for ground-based siege units, and that's exactly what Drago's doing. 
Or sorry, what, what is those doing? To point out, resonance have been considered kind of underpowered lately. But this is an application where they have some use. They can absolutely outrange everything here. This forces Santa's hand. Drago's already prepared with everything else. Kalix from Santa. Focusing on the wrong target. That buys time. These once the once the defenses go down, there's a complete opening. There's in fact from here on out, they could push. Santa realizing this goes in. The thrums try to take everything out, but it's no to no avail. The Kalix able to deal enough damage before everything comes through. Is the Omnivore able to deal enough damage? Just barely. The Akalix coming through to help out with that. Lightforger holding the line for now. But that... I can tell you, there's a small crack in the armor there, but that did not pay off. Now for this set of defenses in the back. Santa with the harassment. If they can if they can get rid of the resonance that Rajas has built up, that does mean there's not much of a threat to the defenses. Like for what has been set up, the resonance are about the only significant threat to the tag defenses that have been set up so far. Everything else that could come through simply isn't going to matter. The Sentinel Warden force here from Drago. Definitely trying to find an angle they can use to start wiping out all this stuff. And, you know, the Calyx don't shoot up, and the Omnivores, some of them are weakened. It's definitely... There's a timing here, maybe. It's just risky for Dragon Zoo. Walter Team, as long as they hold the contain, they maintain map control. Granted, Wide though, has expanded. So the contain has been partially breached. But the emphasis is on the word, partially. And in all this time, we're seeing, like, Sand and Lightforger are gearing up for an assault. Already Lightforger deciding to push in that little bit further with the Acolix. Looking to find some angles to come in on. Santa Claus, just playing it safe. Don't want to lose their thrums so they can help it. But the win condition for Walter Team is to hold this position. As long as Walter Team holds this position, they're fine. As long as they hold this position, Dragon Zoo can't expand. They can't really do anything. It's just a matter of time for Walter Team to actually get around and know what's happening. Dragon Zoo double-checking, seeing what expansions have been taken, seeing how far behind they actually are. And the answer is not as far back as they think, but farther back than they'd like. So far... Walter team really only has one extra expansion on them. But they still have that map control advantage. And they still have Zul as a threat to summon in there to take out bases. Like, this this expansion is doomed. Why is Zul going to try to help it out? But again, that Zul, that Zul burst damage. Okay! That Zul burst damage gets stuck. Duffed. Thrones were, or thrones were forced to retreat, leaving Zal completely undefended. Why just Zoe saves the day? And further openings are being found again. You see here, you can't you can't leave it vulnerable too long. Because there is going to be that push back from the other side, but there's not a whole lot of force here. Again, there will be. The economy is starting to pay off for Walter Team. But then again, you know, Dragon Zoo. Eh, why not pull the same trick? You know? Send sends all back, damage the necropolis a little bit. Or grow far rather a little bit. You know? One more of those, and that's actually even on expansions. So Walter Team. Gets getting very invested in this contain does have a bit more expanding going on, just it's a bit slow. It's taking a little while. Dragon Zoo finding a way to beat them at their own game. And 
push coming through with Santa's last Zul Summon, not current Zul Summon, and still quite a few left. So one thing about map control on this map, you get a lot of pyre. You, like this, this threat, this threat of your base just goes dead, is something Dragon Zoo's gonna have to deal with the rest of the game. But they've teched up Dragon Zoo with the Behemoth tech. Another option that they have to get rid of these defenses. Set humans around the side and gradually wear away the defenses. Again, if this contain gets broken before Santa and Lightforger can really get their armies going, it's like, which is like now. If the contain can be broken within the next minute, then Dragon Zoo has a real shot at taking this game. But it needs to be in the next minute. If it's not in the next minute, it is over. Like, it has to be. It has to be now. These thrones coming in, these have to be the vanguard of Dragon Zoo's breakout force. That is the only way Dragon Zoo is going to have a chance. Any, If they wait any longer, they simply will not have the army necessary to push through, actually remove some of the assets that Walter Team has built up. Now, granted, Walter Team has been clever. They've been expanding in the shadow of Walter Team's contain. Uh, this, this thing... This thing no, they've been actually pretty clever about this stuff. Unfortunately, the center expansion has been spotted and taken out. But the south expansion only just now got spotted. And that's going to separate out the forces. It's going to make it... That's going to buy some time for Dragon Zoo to break out of here. Which they have to do literally now. This is it. This fight coming now. Pushing back Lightforger. Still, that's always going to be a problem. The Akalics are still a problem. This is not... This base is doomed... But if the push can get taken out, the breakout might happen. Lightforger has nothing up their sleeve for the time being. Santa Claus still is a great hunt they could throw out there just to stuff the behemoths. But Lightforger is a little up a creek right now. But that breakout force, that's gotta happen. That didn't quite work out. Walter team able to take out Washington's expansion. The contain is once again complete as Light Fortune and Santa Claus so again just decide we'll we'll get more expansion. Dragon Watchers though have quite a lot in the bank. They actually I'm a curious why we're not seeing a lot of extra production, because they are both of them floating quite heavily. Like if they spent all this money, they actually could maintain that position. They could get it they do have another crack at it. They didn't quite break out in that first fight. But with that extra resources they have in the bank, they have one. They did manage to maybe get one more shot. It's a longer shot than before, and we're seeing Light Fortress not taking any chances. On oh, the lockdowns coming in from Light Forger, why is it so losing half their air force? Drago rotating in to help out. Not a whole lot of units that can actually shoot up are left for Light Forger, but the units aren't the concern. The problem is the static defense. Trying to find the opening to clear that up is proving significantly more challenging than I think Dragon Team had quite or Dragon Zoo had quite realized. And now it's it's looking dire. Walter Team, they have the entire map under their control. They have all the pyre in the world. They have everything they could possibly hope for. And this is one last play. Trying to find the opening. Trying to find the way to break through the defenses. The thrones certainly providing assistance. Nothing else. But like I said, they needed to be the vanguard. They need to be able to push forward and apply their damage like far more effectively. The Ecolics have been spotted. One of them goes down, if nothing else. But it's just every single time. Like this... I, surprisingly, I'm surprised why they're trying to break through this bridge. For two reasons. One, rocks. You can take out the rocks. It, it's a bit of a risk, but it does mean you don't have to go through this giant contain. But more importantly, behemoths fly. Why does it could just go over to the side here by the by this alley only, scout out what's going on, or use the teapot here to scout out what's going on, and then see, oh, I can poke in the defensive from this side. And then by doing that, you know, thins out the defensive line. It's a little, maybe a little late now, but definitely earlier that was an option. Before the defenses got fully solidified. 
to attack from that flank and then push in, but it's just... For whatever reason, they're insisting on going through this bridge, despite not having to. But yeah, also, again, rocks. Like, it's, it's a gamble, but right now, there's no time. It may be too late already. Dragon Zoo, they're... They're holding it, but they're not getting ground back. Having lost the outside bases, there's they're gonna be mined out very shortly. Like this is it may be too late. This may just be bare like trying to hold the line with nothing really to their name. Like, I'm trying I'm trying to see anything at all that might open things up but not really like you really just feel like it's coming down to not realizing your units can fly when they can or find those openings when they have the chance it's just or the fact that resonance are not very popular right now we're seeing a few of them but resonance really are not popular at the moment Resonance really are not popular at the moment, so they, you know, we don't see the numbers that we needed to actually break this down. The Ecolics might be able to work as well, but, oh, no, oh, it's just not enough damage. Light Forger is not losing their army. Santa is in a position to completely clear the skies. Look, that's it. Santa's got the force to wipe out everything that Dragon Zoo have built up. The Dragon Zoo has going for them. And that'll be it. This is a matter of time. Like, when Santa wants to pull the trigger, game's over. Even if they lose this army, Walter Team has such a presence on the map, has so much more money on their side, that they could lose their army twice over and be fine. Dragon Zoo, on the other hand, they're broke. They're out of ether. Like, they're just about out of alloy too. This is this is almost over for them. I'm really not sure why San is playing with their food right now. Like seriously, guys, there's more tournament to be played. You can literally win right now. These Arox will win the game. You have taken the entire map. Please stop playing with your food. Please end the game. This tournament is bigger than it is you guys. I'm honestly getting a little bit annoyed. Like, I realize it's not necessarily perfect, but there's a hundred Aerox, or almost a hundred Aerox here. That is more than enough to wipe this whole army out. This whole Air Force is gone. I don't know why Santa is being so coy about using them. Again, Santa and Lightforger can take out everything that Dragon Zoo has, lose everything themselves, rebuild, come back. Half their production line is inside of their opponent's, well, half of the map. This, there's, there's no risk here. I really don't understand what the hesitation is. Well, as it stands, it looks like Dragon Zoo's at least given time to squirm, but really not much else. Like, what? Like, are they... Is Walton really afraid of a massive counterattack? Everyone's maxed out. Everyone's got maxed out population. There's, there's no reason to be afraid of that. The, the defender's advantage has been nullified because of the production lines far forward. What is the concern? There's no gain a certain amount of resources by X time victory in this game. It's like you have to take out your opponent one way or the other. That's the only way to win. That's how this game works. Okay, there we go. There's the trigger pull coming in here. Drago casting salvation. Suppose a consideration. But even with that... Oh, wow, that was in Santa's entire army. Oh, wow. 
Actually, kind of smart move with Salvation, when you think of it. I mean, I could see that maybe being a threat that they considered, but also, if that's the case, why did you build 80 Aerox? Though, again, it doesn't matter. Santa's able to rebuild their entire army f at once. For basically free. So, Salvation, it did a decent, o decently okay job saving these forces, kind of. But, no, Drago still lost most of their Air Force. Zoas don't lost most of their Air Force. Their armies are still significantly weaker than they were before, and now Santa's got a competent ground army that's just going to have no problems. There's the push. Baljim going for it. Is there anything that can really stop them? I mean, okay, Kali's and Zo are doing a decent job. They're making a run of it. But the count their counterparts on Baljim... Closing the gap. Santa Claus maintaining that army advantage, being the main one to do so. And as it stands, there's not a whole lot left for Dragon Zoo. And they cannot afford to lose their army. Santa absolutely can. Bush gets rid of the Akalix. Three left. Two left. One left. Last Akalix can only do so much as Light Forge's reinforcements swarm in. Taking out the frontal expansions, leaving the main base is the only thing left, which they're broke. There's nothing left. Santa and Lightforger, I mean, they did win. Admittedly, probably could have been, probably could have done it a bit more efficiently, but hey, they won. Like, really, I don't know. I did feel like they were playing with their food. I did just, it really did. But they have now decided to actually eat it. And the only ones eating it here are Dragon Zoo. Losing their natural expansions at a stroke. Their main base, better defended by static defenses, but even that is only going to last for so long. <laughs> really, like, Walter Team doesn't even care. They're just throwing their forces in. They know it's, they have such an economic advantage, they don't have to worry about anything. Battle of Attrition will go Waldstein's favor. So much static Sheesh! How much static defense could you build? I mean, I get the idea, but honestly, I think this might have been a bit of a mistake. I'm not kidding. Like, I think the static defense is, it doesn't help Dragon Zoo win the game. It just means it takes longer for them to lose. And not much longer either. These Akalics are doing wonders, so... Yeah, as it was, like, Dragon Zoo... If they had used that money, or honestly, even floated that money, got a full full population army, and then floated them floated the money to be able to survive attacks or survive a, out survive an ex escape attempt, they would have been fine. They would have had a chance, but now it really is just how long can you stave off defeat, not whether you can win. And these thrones from Drago, they're doing an okay job. They're like they're holding the line reasonably okay. Doing some damage, taking out some of mostly Light Fortress forces. But so what? So what? Everything belongs to Walter Team. All is Walter, as the memes go. And this is it, Santa, with what they are believing to be the final push. As everything comes in, and Walter Team just doesn't have. Wall team just doesn't have it. Thrones going down one by one. Even with Heaven's Aegis, it's simply not enough to maintain that presence. <laughs> this is all coming in here. Doesn't matter. More Aerox to s clean up the thrones. As Santa and Lightforger just sign to roll over the base. Expanding into their opponent's expansion. Okay, seriously, guys? I mean, it makes sense. I don't blame you. It's just like... Just, just win. <laughs> like, I mean, the attack defenses are gone. It's it, there's there's no resistance on Wajizo's side. Drago, there's still a little bit left, but the Akalics are just wrecking it anyway. 
Santa Claus looking to clear out the last few thrones, and with those thrones gone, Dragon Zoo has literally nothing to hold the line. Yeah, the the force the push is over, Walter team takes it, and gotta say, like that the contain was effective. Like it definitely was kind of clever. It's clever bringing the underspines in to get the early aerovores and omnivores. Dragon Zoo did have a chance while Wajazo had the expansions out front. Unfortunately, they did not go around the sides, taking advantage of the airborne nature of the behemoths, or just the fact that there's the rocks they can break to open the side to get out of the contain. Like to hit it from the flank. Take out the Sag defenses one at a time rather than all at once outside of the thin choke point. That would have given them a chance to actually smash the contain open and then take map control back. At like even if they were worried about Zol coming around the side, it simply wasn't that big of a threat at that point. They had the army to deal with Zol. And stopping your opponent from getting map control is pretty important to maintaining that advantage. So with that, unfortunately, like whether it's because whether it's real or imagined, that contain the doubles all contain from multi team. It's two for two so far. And Dragon Zoo just letting the inevitable pass over them. Anyway. I believe we are actually going to be going into... We might be getting into the other semifinals match because they were a little late and I couldn't really deal with that. But yeah, I think we're into next game pretty shortly. Okay, well, apparently... So yeah, it did... So, just as a... Point of order, if you're going to be playing in the tournament, please make sure the previous evening, or just the previous day, do make sure you've updated your client. Like, do make sure that you've logged into the game. Sometimes the updates can take a while, and that will be a problem. Unfortunately, we're going to be held up by that. We might not get a winner semifinals for this. It might just be, that might be a disqualification. I don't know what is going to happen. We need to sort that out. So, for the time being, I'm... Actually, I'm going to see what's happening. Then we'll keep y'all on stream posted. I don't really want to go to break if I can help it. Okay, so I think we're just going to have the other Winter Semis match. Alright, I'm going to work at the admin stuff. Sorry about this. I, yeah, unfortunately, I can't do everything at once. So, I'm going to deal with that for right now. So, I've made an executive decision. The... We will have a partial disqualification for Golden Entropy. It's Entropy Mr. Cream. There was a... Mr. Cream did not update their client, so I am... And since I'm currently in charge, I couldn't really deal with that in the meantime. They're going to be given a loss and loses bracket. They will be able to play that in time just to keep the bracket moving. I'm just going to do... Do that if they can't after a while. Like, it, well, we'll make a judgment call, but losers... Bracket is best of one, and we have to do the losers finals anyway. So I don't, I'm not too concerned about it holding things up anymore. Anyway, gonna have magical hydraulics against the Walter team because that is the winners finals. That's that that's how it played out. You can see it right there on stream. So or you could before I as I was <laughs> before I said that and made you not able to see that, but you know what I mean. Okay, okay, we can get this going. So, I'm actually kind of interested to see that we have Magical and Santa Claus on opposite teams today. Normally, Santa and Magical are playing together. Also, Walter team. It, it's a... Uh... I have three Walter teams listed in my little document. As, as may surprise nobody, I have a document literally listing everybody who has played on stream and what they've played. Although, I'm going to have to... haven't really been updating that super well today, but, you know. Trying to list what people are playing on stream, who they're playing with, all that stuff. Which is something... I have... So I have records of all the teams you see on stream. There are three different Walter teams. Santa has been a Scruffy, Magical, and Light Forger. But the important thing is Magical being the more frequent play partner for Santa. 
This week, Magical is paired up with the biggest fan of 2v2, Hydraulics. While Sand and Lightforger have been going out, going hard with double Zul contain strategies today. Strategies with Magical are, is very familiar with. As Sand and Magical have been playing and practicing against each other with these strategies in 1v1. So they're both very familiar with what they're each trying to do. I imagine Hydraulic Zell has been brought to speed, so this is going to be interesting. I feel like Lightforger, or sorry, I feel like Dragon Zoo, Dragon Watch Zoo, were a little bit blindsided by just how much this is a thing and how to deal with it. A little bit. I mean, zoe has been playing Zoll already, so it's not like they're. I don't know that they're necessarily playing Zoll to do it. They clued in in the second game. We saw them. Throw out Zol for base kills, attempts at base kills anyway, in the second game. So I expect there's going to be some of that now. However, I don't know how much of that is actually going to be... Like, how successful it's going to be, because if both sides are trying to do this, it could just be a Zol base race. But I expect it'll be more contained attempts and breakouts. And more a matter of who managed to get the contain first. Actually... Depends on who we actually see people play. So we get into the game and there are more choices that are locked in, then we'll have a better idea, but yeah, I don't know that they're gonna go double Zol. That's that might just pin a thing of, well, you know, Dragon Zoo doesn't know what's up. Magical hydraulics do. We might wanna Might wanna be careful as to who exactly we use that against. So see how that works out. As today. Th this game, at least, there's one of everybody. One of each of them. Magical Hydraulics going for double Orism. Santa Life Forger going for double Zol. But, oh. Hmm. I don't remember Embargo's lighting looking this good. Oh, wait, no, I do. Never mind. It has looked this good for a while. We haven't seen Embargo in a bit. Anyway. Only Santa, sorry, only Light Forger really is in a position to start summoning Zol and being silly with it, and they're not going for it. They are instead just going for a macro play. We're going to see a bit of a straightforward game. Both players, both teams know what's up. I I think because they both know that e the other knows what's up, none of them are really going for it. Like, this is just going to be a straight-up game. We might see Lightforger drop Zol in to take out the occasional Acropolis, but this is not this is not a cheesy game. Both, like, Sand and Lightforger know their opponents have an answer. They will not be taken uh, by surprise. So Magical Hydraulics are definitely pushing a little bit more economically, a little bit. As you can see, Lightforger, even if they're not going necessarily super hard, like they have the expansion and everything, they're still gonna go for the early aggression. Try to provide a bit of pressure, maybe take out an Acropolis. If they get lucky, they might be able to. A little hard on Embargo. The map isn't particularly open. But they might. The option is there. We are seeing Lightforger set up for it. They don't even have any Aether yet. They're going full-on double altar Bone Stalker, which is the startup for that cheese. Santa. Santa's not going super cheesy. Santa's going pretty, pretty typical start. Definitely infantry focused, but no, this is this is a matter of how much pressure can Light Fortress apply to Magical Hydraulics before they really get set up. And that question, the answer to that question is going to determine a lot of how this game progresses. Now it's worth noting there is there's a scout here. There is a teapot that is ready to allow a summoning of Zol. But there's also a ton of pressure in the back lines, stealing the stealing the Walter Team Pyre Camp. Magical Hydraulics are not letting up. No, Walter Team. You know, can they make this push work? Definitely have that early aggression. They definitely have the unit count. They don't have the tech. This is a 
This is Light Forger really pushing it. They don't have anything for they have any ether at all. This is entirely Bone Stalker. Like not even tech Bone Stalker. This is just mass Bone Stalker. Hoping Santa Claus can hold the line. And they might be able to drop Zola, get rid of the tower. Not even have to. Just just go. Force the power expenditure, making it a bit easier to attack the main base, because now there's Oh, there's still an Empire Unbroken. But there's one fewer Empire Unbroken. Should they go for it. And that's gonna be a lot. Oh, good choice. Good call with that on the on the call there by Santa Claus. Keeping Light Forger safe. Being a team player there, that Santa Claus. Not being nutty at all. Push coming through. This is the moment of truth. Zola's drop for Light Forger. Going for the base. They're surround onto Light Forger's forces. They're forced to retreat. Santa Claus lost their support force. Light Forger, can they keep the units alive? Is the better question here. Magical's just continuing to press. And Light Forger, again, they don't have any tech from here. That push was a lot of their assets. That's most. Of, that's almost everything they were going for. Walter team has fallen significantly behind as a result of this. Lightforger now pivoting into some tech. Did at least you know, see the writing in the wall while going for the push. Not going to double down on the on the bone stalkers. They are still behind in tech production. They didn't get a lot of damage here. They really didn't deal any significant damage to this Acropolis in the front. And Magical Hydraulics, they lost very few of their forces. While taking out almost like taking out all of Santa Claus's there, I mean a significant chunk of Light Fortress. Halder team they've got they've got problems. Now we're gonna see them come to a head. Significantly reducing the effectiveness of the of those bone stalkers, allowing the opening to come through for hydraulics, just whittling away at Walter Team's forces. And that tower, Walter Team wants it gone. If they if they can't get rid of it, then there's no breaking it now. There's way too many Zentari. They're gonna get that range buff. They're gonna get powered up here. This this position is unassailable now. Walter Team's momentum has been stopped dead in its tracks. Thrums from San are at least something, but Hydraulics, well prepared for that. And Light Forger doesn't have doesn't have Pyre or really access to more Pyre. They want to go for any like drops of Zol in the back lines. Now it's, it's just gonna be can they like keep magical hydraulics from pushing out too much? Like as long as Magical Hydraulics are pinned to this tower, there's at least some hope that Santa and Light Forger can expand around the map and get out-expand their opponent's army. Maybe get some pokes in here and there with summonings all in the back lines. But that pin is not easy to maintain. We're already seeing Magical just doesn't care. Just leaving the protection of the tower, going for it. I mean, Magical doesn't actually really need it that much. Hydraulics does, because their units depend on the tower for that extra range, but... Magical? No, they get extra healing, but if they're not in combat, what does it matter? Santa getting out of position gets intercepted by Magical. Light Forger trying to help out their teammate, but the damage has been done. Santa's lost a significant chunk of their army, and <laughs> Magical Hydraulics don't need to keep pushing this. Fall back, taking minimal losses, and wiping out about a quarter of Santa's army. While Santa, in the meantime, at least tries to figure out, like, what areas are vulnerable? What can they start... What can they pick on? Not much, it turns out, as Hydraulics... Their anti-air force is becoming just stronger and stronger with no real resistance. And that distraction is going to be enough to allow Magical to get the opening needed to break around the backside. And, like, Santa and Life Forge, they did nothing to defend this. Santa was trying to. They paid for it dearly. The only upside, maybe this distraction is not enough. Hydraulics 
They care about the tower. They're holding the tower. The rocks have fallen. The opening is there. Lightforger will at least be a bit of a buffer in case an attack comes from that angle. This is forcing Sand and Lightforger's hand. It's forcing them to basically respond in kind just to provide that opening for the distraction. But then it's, is it going to be a base race? And as it stands, it is an advantage of Magical Hydraulics right now. The only advantage, the advantage of base race that exists for Walter's team is, of course, Zol. But Light Forge doesn't have the power to summon. Army coming. Is that going to be enough for that army? It is. Gets rid of one base. Is that going to be enough to stay alive? Bigger question. With the root coming in here, last second root from Santa, saving Light Forge from a 2v1. Damage was taken, but nowhere near as badly as it could have been. Santa with that clutch skill shot. Very well played. Can we get a replay of that? Yes, we can. Right there. That... That was huge. Like, I am very impressed by that skill... That, that root from the Dread Sisters. You don't see it come up to that great effect that often, but... That... That's the reason Walter team is still in this match. <laughs> Unfortunately, still in this match may not be enough to outright win, but the expansions have been taken. The eastern side of the map is getting more and more under the control of Walter team. And they actually have an advantage economically. Especially having forced that rebuild. Push here, a little bit risky. He's going for a base race. Magical will be able to take out Lightforger's third. Lightforger will be able to do the same back. Of course, that's more the question of what happens next. Magical goes to the surround. Santa Claus in a position to deal with it. They have, they've already set up a rear guard. The Ancient is surrounded. Walter Team will take it, and with that, Lightforger will have plenty of ability to take out a base from behind. Life Forger can now basically threaten anything from any... Like, any flying T-Bot will threaten any base. Magical Hydraulics now have to keep that in mind. Or, you know, just any unit, really. Walter Team... They know they have this advantage. They know they can press it. They don't want to be cocky about it, though. They do have to deal with the fact that there are Sharu on the field. But their ability to re set up the positioning in their favor has been quite amazing. Oh, the sh oh that Ostrike. Oh, cutting Santa's army down. It's It can't hold. It doesn't all die, but the retreat preserves the tower. It preserves Magical Hydraulics' position. But again, that's not the real game. The real game is this. <laughs> Any force in the back line means there is a potential for a Zul base kill. And Magical Hydraulics, they know it, but they also don't want to lose the center ground. Hold the center ground instead. Enough of a token force in the back to at least to hold the line. But it's simply not enough. Walter Team able to get the surround off there. Losing the advantage on numbers, relying entirely on clever spellcasting to make up the difference. on their back line, but so far Walter Team has not gone for the tricksy tricks quite yet. Lightforger, using Zol in the front lines primarily as an additional force multiplier. But again, the key here is the fact that this is an economic advantage for Walter Team. Like, they really are using that Zol pressure to slow down how quickly Lightforger, or sorry, how quickly Magical and Hydraulics can expand. Which is still giving them a, a win. Slowly but surely, it's giving them a win. Not to mention, this expansion here, this third base, like, it hasn't been built up. All it is, like, all there are is fire singers, far as the eye can see. And, well, you got a Mal player, you can just deal with that. Actually, both, both our players can deal with that, so, yeah. This, the only possible downside here is if Magical Hydraulics go for a counterattack, but that isn't the way of it. 
Magical hydraulics? Oh, really? Really? God, it's not even an advantage either. Well, I guess that's gonna be. A... Yeah, it's a crash. All right. Well, looking at the game as it stands, I don't think I could call it either way. Like, Walter team is definitely pressing an advantage, but dang, I can't call it. I'm sorry. Gonna have to replay it. Yeah, so re replay it with everything the same. That is a shame. Alright. I mean, it looked like it might have been the case that it could have gone Walter Team's way, but that really depended on the outcome of the next fight. And dang, if it had crashed a minute later, it would have been fine. But no, it had to crash exactly when it did. Mm. Alpha thinks it happens. We move on. We have protocols. Protocols are if one team is at a clear advantage, it goes to them. Otherwise, you replay with the same immortal, same map, everything. Like, essentially, it's a do-over. Well, it is Break the Game Weekly. It's called Break the Game for a reason. Game gets broken, game gets patched. Game gets fixed, game gets more stable. It's actually, like, honestly, like, I know we just had a crash, but this is, like... If I'm acting surprised, it's because I am. The game has actually gotten stable enough that crashes aren't a regular thing anymore. There was a point where crashes were quite frequent, and then the tech team just went all out right before the first alpha trials. The game has been never, never been stabler. Well, we got a game of very much macro play, which relied on the Zol threat, but not actually used Zol all that much. And now we have a game that happened after that game, which means that we have a game where, well, we'll see what happens. But I never said they had to play the same way. And in fact, Lifeforger going much more tech focused. Not bothering with the early aggression this time. I suppose one of those things that's likely to only work once. Magical hydraulics. Don't seem at all scared. Like, what is. What is Hydraulics doing? Going for early Legion Hall? Yes, they are. Okay, so maybe a little bit scared. Maybe a little bit concerned that there might be some early aggression, which is fair. That is that is a thing that can happen. The Walsh team? No, they're really playing this hard on economic. They they don't care. Like they're they're not gonna try to repeat the last game. Gonna try to win later in the game, rather than go for ultimately ill-fated attempt to get in here. Really, it was, there was some clutch plays to keep themselves alive, and while the Walter team, I think, had a good shot of taking the game at the end of it, the path they took to get there was meandering and risky. They could very well have lost it all. Still, they did play well, and there is definitely room to convert that into you know, further success. But no, it's going to be Lightforger shifting completely, going for double altar or double womb. Are they going for mass Icor? I don't know. Most of the time they've been going for underspines early. That's been kind of their thing. That doesn't require amber womb, mind you. Or at least you don't build them out of the Amber Room. Yes, they're indeed going for Icors. <laughs> Bit of an old strategy, but it still checks out. Especially if their opponent's going for faster early aggression, like faster early lower tech aggression. Yeah, those Saparis and Tari, they're vulnerable to the Icors. Magical Hydraulics kind of playing into Life Forger's plans at the moment. Don't expect we're going to be seeing similar response coming in from Magical Hydraulics. Or at least from Magical. Magical is set up to deal with Santa's, or to get the forces to deal with Santa's army. To get the counter to that. Those lighter units. Well, my Lightforger 
Yeah, they're already prepped. They're ready. They're they're doing all right. Ooh, opening up immediately. Walsh team not wanting to wait at all. Getting that opening, leaving it vulnerable. They also know if something's coming through. Pulling away the Oh, nice distraction there. Santa not leaving it at all clear. That, like, they're just trying to get rid of this wall. Hydraulics is going to check as a matter of course. We'll find that... Oh, are they going to check? Yes, they are. They do spot it. Yeah, they, they see there's a problem there. And Santa does not care. Not for now, anyway. Trying to find an angle. There's the angle. Force the absolvers out. Don't even need to go in. The The damage has been done. Santa and Lightforge are having this open means that they have a massive... They present a huge threat in the back lines. Because already... Remember, Lightforge is already presenting an expansion there because they're playing Zol. So, on top of that, now a wall has been removed that otherwise would have existed. Santa and Lightforge are taking full advantage of this situation to in, to potentially take the game. If not a contain, at the very least getting a contain. Couple tower or tower gone. Have Zol down to help out with that. One absolver down, the second absolver. So two absolvers remain. One left. The absolver's down. There is no resistance from magical hydraulics. Moat pulls are forced. The Icors are are fully ready for this. Some defense and depth here from Magical, but it's simply not enough. Resolvers from Hydraulics able to hold the line a little bit longer. Can Santa get the reinforcements in? Main question. But again, it's not enough. These Resolvers simply cannot get the positions they need. And any any Centauri coming through, Hydraulics cannot push in. Magical and Hydraulics now forced to hold in in the back. Not quite a contain, but... Certainly not allowed to be as flexible on the map as they'd like. And now with map control means Light Forger can once again threaten a tower kill or a base kill by just dropping Zal onto it. Speaking of, center of the map taking a bit of damage. Santa's reinforced. Light Forger finding the flank. Cannot find the position though. Magical and Hydraulics, they do have their resolvers set up and that will stop Lightforger from just running roughshod over the Zentari. There's actual support there from Magical Hydraulics for their Light Forces. But again, the wall is open, the hole is there, and Lightforger passing right through the door they doorway they made. That distraction does mean the front frontline forces are less set up. That suddenly out of position, another Zol drop. Zolvers are doing pretty well for their numbers. Honestly, that those numbers are the main asset now. But the tower goes down. This entire that much less strong. Hydraulics' force is compromised. But at the benefit of getting rid of all of these Ikor, Lightforger and Santa Claus have to be a bit more careful now. Lightforger pivoting off into the mid game, switching off into Bone Stalkers, getting the upgrades for them, getting some casters as well. The Red Seers will help them soften up Magical and Hydraulics' forces. But Light Forger's army did its job. Like, it did significantly reduce Hydraulics' presence in the fight. Making, not quite a 2v1, but certainly, to some extent, at least, re like, 1.5v2, I'd say. It's, well, it's solid play on their part. And now Magical Hydraulics, they have an advantage going into the mid-game. In fact, forcing a retreat from Magical. The rest of Hydraulics' forces being routed and getting picked off one by one. Sand and Lightforger have control of the center of the map now. They do have to deal with, you know, these towers here and there, but they have control of the center of the map. Their bonus stocks are fully upgraded too? Okay, that's something to watch out for. Light Force's Bone Stalkers are ready. They're they're ready to go. This is this is a major threat. 
I mean, the one thing about embargo is that because of the reduced buyer income, it is a little bit harder for Zal to be set up. Of course, that's a question of degree, not a question of kind. Like, there's still that threat that can still exist. It's less frequent, but it, it does come up, and that's going to be a problem. One which will manifest in a minute and a half, right in the center of the map, which, again... Walter team is full control of magical hydraulics. No, they need to get that back. They have the forces to at least break the line. Actually, are starting to build up a significant army advantage. Especially when you consider that most of Light Forge's force is very much a surprise ambush force. Once it gets that first shot off, there's not a whole lot of gas left in the tank. Much of it is also vulnerable to everything the Magical Hydraulics have built up. Like, that, Absolvers in particular are going to be a significant threat, and without the I-Cores that were set up before, it's going to come down to my, a good spellcasting micro on the Walter team's side to actually soften up all of these tough ores and forces Magical Hydraulics are sending out. Mm -hmm. The Walter team baiting out Magical Hydraulics. Sand getting slightly surrounded. Does get some solid casts off. Surround is going the other way, but Santa breaks the wall. Gets out. Able to regroup with their teammate. Having softened up their opponents. Dealt a bit of damage. Santa and Light Forger. They got what they wanted. They got rid of an expansion. They got rid of a tower. Providing that little extra bit of control into the ancient fight. Light for Magical and Hydraulics, though, they still have the advantage on army. Like, this this push here in the center, it's going to be the moment of truth. Magical Hydraulics, they have the resources, they have the assets. Do they have the position? Hydraulics going for the flank. Magical's the only one going for the straight-up shot. And Light Forger out of position trying to get that pyre. They do need it. They want to provide that side threat. They want to give Santa Claus some breathing room. Like, breathing room to take the Ancient, that is. And the Zol Sum is going to be important. Life Forge coming in. Slight 2v1 at the start. Able to soften up some of the back line for Magical. Ancient will be going to the Walter team. Opening them even further to damage. But then it's at... Or is it? Or is it? Starting to turn around. The softening... The softening blow is coming through. It's going to make it harder and harder for Hydraulics to hold. And now that second push. The payoff for the setup of softening... The setup of the Blood Plagues. Hydraulics' army wiped off the map. Magical's force is able to survive mostly by being in the air and away from the Blood Plagues. But the Ancient still taking significant damage from Walter Team. The Walter team themselves not actually able to hold the line, losing most of the frontline forces. Again, relying primarily on casters. And while they are doing a solid job setting their opponents up, again, you need that ground force to pay it off. You need the ground force to take actually clean up the weakened units. The ground force is it's gradually getting there. Bone stalkers are back. They're also a fair bit of dedicated anti-air from Light Forger. And now, though, Walter team, they get it. They get advantage in the army. They know better than to push this, though. The advantage in the army is slight. It's an advantage more of the logistics of HP than it is the advantage of actual numbers. And that's that advantage is getting worn thin fairly quickly. Hydraulics. Hydraulics does have several magi. They have healers. So, Blood Plague, while useful, is only useful for so long. Are the fight being joined now? Essentially, two separate 1v1 surround coming in onto Magical Hydraulics. Walter team looking to take out that tower before it gets built up. It is going to be deployed, though. That cannot be stopped. Magical Hydraulics managed to retake the center. Or at least retake contesting the center. But with Hydraulics' Hallowers, it's going to be that much harder for Walter Team to actually hold their own. Worth noting, in the meantime, Walter Team has out-expanded Magical Hydraulics. But it also means that they've been pivoting into expansions 
So they are a little bit short on army at the moment. Should be able to produce back into it. It's going to take a minute. Magical Hydraulics do have a bit of an opening to at the very least secure their own borders, if not start to push a little bit themselves, harass a little bit in the back lines. Maybe even threaten a base. Very least, it's enough of a threat to put Lightforger out of position. But Hydraulics, a bit more concerned about maintaining their own presence. Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, maintaining their own presence is right. Just rebuilding that rock wall, but stronger this time, and with Pyre. And whether it's going to be enough comes down to whether they can hold the center. So far, Walter team is struggling to get in here. Again, solid spellcasting, doing a decent job, but not getting any actual kills. Magical Hydraulics, they can still hold the line. Xana and Lightforger don't want to risk losses, given that, you know, it's it's kind of tough to push in. Like, it is actually kind of a challenge to push in here. And Walter team, like, they want those sure victories. Both playing Aru, they're both relying very much on the positioning going in their favor, which it currently is. Salvation coming in, providing that little bit of extra damage. And Salvation, is it, where did Aru get some? Oh, far enough away, it doesn't matter. Magical Hydraulics both out of Pyre. The Salvation is over. The forces, Magical Hydraulics overextending. Hydraulics getting surrounded in a 2v1. Magical able to reinforce someone, but that Salvation pulled most of their forces out of the fight. Thrones go down, two left, one remains. Nothing in the sky. The Absolvers trying to hold the line, but taking too long to deploy. No damage dealt. Santa Claus and Lightforger can now sweep across Magical Hydraulics with nothing in the way. A few thrones will pop in, maybe an Absolver here or there, but it's not enough. Walter team takes game one, take two of the winner's finals. And boy, did they deserve it, because that was that was very well fought. S solid thinking early on with the rock wall. Left that thread open, allowing for allowing them to slow down, con not contain, but certainly keep their opponents distracted. Keep Magical Hydraulics from being able to actually get out on the map too much. And then, you know, strategic use of Zul to take out the towers. I mean, the fact is, it's still, it, your threat, you cannot expand very far when you have the threat of Light Fortress dropping Zul on your base. And that means, again, the expansion is coming from Walter Team. And the push is real. So that's that. Well done. We are going to be moving on to Fool's Bay for the next game. Yeah, Magical's just straight up quit. But this is... That's a solidly one win. I mean, I did not... I wasn't sure how well this would work, actually, to be honest. Like, no no shade on the on the Walter team, but, you know, Santa's really good. Lightforger is good, but Magical is a formidable foe. And Hydraulics... I mean, I call Hydraulics the biggest fan of 2v2 for a good reason. Hydraulics loves playing 2v2s. I'm not sure how much they've had a chance to practice recently, but still, like... This is this is fairly evenly matched. Magical's won a bit more of the 2v2s than Santa has. So I figured, you know, maybe. But so far, so far, Walter Team has been doing an amazing job just playing with the new patch. Like, playing with the options that that's enabled. So I've got to hand it to them. It's been very impressive. It's a it's solid, solid showing from the Walter team. And really both games, because I mean, the first game, the first game I will admit was a little bit, a l I mean, obviously it crashed. That was, or the first pass at the first game did crash, which that sucked. But you can kind of see like, it's possible that Walter team might've been able to take an advantage and then move from there. So a bit of a, bit of a vindication of that in the second game take in a second crack at that game that Walter team with this slightly different strategy was able slightly but not significant like strategy was the same the particular the particular tactical means of getting there were a bit different but yeah Walter team 
they they showed a solid solid idea of how to play this current setup and yeah that was I actually kind of felt I'm sure it felt really good for them like they were in an advantage state crash came back did a match won it in fi with five minutes less time so next match is gonna be on Fool's Bay at the behest of magical hydraulics having lost and this is a bit of an easier map in a way for the Zol harass because it's more open it's also a map where you like you kind of gotta be careful of the paths to get locked out depending on what magical hydraulics go for for immortal picks i mean if they go for orism then you start getting sections entire chunks of the map locked out the center of the map is very easy to lock out that way if they go for aro mortals it's it might actually be, you know, Zol versus Zol, maybe, depending on how that goes. So it's really going to be a question of what what the players go for. For how well this is going to be, or how possible this is to go for the shenanigans. I mean, Mal double Mala, you get Bloodwells support. Not quite like Orzen, but similar idea. Like creeping on the map kind of thing. It's... That is a potential problem. But let's go. Let's see what they go for. And it will, in fact, be double Mala for Magical and Hydraulics. Lifeforger being the only Zul player, the only non Mala player in this game. Oops. Which is then a question of what is the next step? What is the next thing? What What is. So Magical and Hydraulics do have. They're both going Mala, which is fine for them. It makes sense. But then, what is the step after that? Like, what happens when so they both go for Mala? There are they both going for trying to set up the forward Bloodwell type thing? Are they both just going for a lot of masked hunters so that you know solid mid to late game or I mean, early mid game really is when you get the offering? That's all offering pressure. Just gonna go full on all the kittles. Oops, all kittles today. It's. Definitely the tech approach for Hydraulics. Magical, same thing. They want to play the late game. Light Forager. Light Forager's... Yeah, then definitely going for looking like something similar as before. They're setting up for what could be a Icor build. You know, second Aether, Amber Womb, a couple Amber Wombs get the Icor like last time. Worked really well last time. This time, the response, of course, is getting early tech. Getting units that aren't going to be as easily taken out by Icor. A solid response. I mean, the, the ability for Hydraulics in particular to hold the line, even with the Zentari in hallowed ground, because the Icor strength didn't likely inspire confidence in their ability to deal with that without going for tech themselves. So that's why we see a slower start from Magical Hydraulics. Walter team. Well, we've got Masked Hunters from Santa. We've got a setup for Zukal from Light Forger. I am... I'm seeing the makings of a bit of a quick push here. Definitely Light Forger and, Ma and Santa Claus experimenting with the various ways Zol can be either threatened or set up directly as a means of getting of getting rid of expansions, of keeping their opponents contained. Just a variety of ways. Like all sorts of options for what you can do to make that work. They haven't gone for any of the really, really aggressive, like, just pop in, drop Zol in every base and make everything die, which isn't going to work because their opponent's can respond to that but it's like trying the little things to do to still get the same idea double double alter full on aggression well before your opponents could easily set up and take the initiative on the attack take the initiative on the power pyre acquisition as well hydraulics looking to intercept will not be oh we'll be able to steal though does manage to get the steal. And that was critical, because Lightforger could really have used that pyre. They were... It's fit, an extra 15 seconds now before they're able to summon Zol. 
So hydraulics, they bought themselves some time. It's not a huge amount, but some time was bought. Santa actually getting caught a little out of position here. That, that's going to make it that much trickier for Walter team. <laughs> the last kill, Hydraulics, once again, stealing the pyre away from Lightforger. I mean, they know it's up. Like, the, no, I imagine Hydraulics, absolutely no. Lightforger cannot be allowed to get pyre. I think anything, any pyre Lightforger gets, that, that threatens everything. But of course, that's... Well, I'll see what happens now. Zul does pop. And he may not be against buildings, but it's still a significant chunk of damage. Now, Santa Claus, they have that advantage really going for them. Unfortunately, Magical did get a little Kittle set up, but it wasn't in position. Or the, well, Red Harvest, which means no Kittle extra, extra meat in the way. Wasn't in position in time, though. Desperate uses a Pyre. Able to... Force a, a light retreat, but once the kittle are gone, there's no reason not to go for, not to swing back around. Regrouping. Walter team, ready, getting ready to push forward. Or possibly at least find an opening to work with here. Oh, wow, actually. Magical and Hydraulics upgraded a lot of their forces. I was wrong, they were, they were in a much better position than I thought they were. As far as, like, where they used Red Harvest. So yeah, if, in case you're confused, the the wet red sparkly things going on here, that, like, the red sparkly big units here, those units are considered worthy, which is a thing that Mala does where the... So you saw before those that circle where Mala was kind of flying around in the middle. That is her Red Harvest ability. When units die in that circle, she gains a blood. Basically, the amount of supply, it, it becomes a thing. So... She gets a resource that she can then spend to upgrade units and give them basically plus three plus three. If you're familiar with StarCraft terminology, it's like they're fully upgraded, essentially. For a game that doesn't have that kind of upgrade situation yet. But is it gonna matter? Like the numbers coming in from Magical and Hydraulics, this, or Hydraulics in particular, this is a 2v1 scenario. May not be enough. Magical around the back with the Thrums, at least able to take advantage of the distraction, and around the front with the call as well. But is this enough? And certainly a distraction. Hydraulics only up against Santa. Is Lightforger realizing they need to actually go back and defend their base? There's you now they're running low on economy as a result. Is that gonna be enough? It might be. Magical hydraulics regrouping right in the middle of Walter Team's front line. Walter team trying their best. They do have hunting grounds that at least provide a little bit extra damage. For them, it's not really enough, though. Now, a handful of upgrading units may not be a threat, but your entire army being fully upgraded to be worthy, that is. Now Hydraulics can just run roughshod over here. Magical did lose a lot of their army, but now... All for the sake of buffing up Hydraulics' forces. But of course, that goes both ways. Santa is also playing Mala. Santa can also turn dead units into stronger units. And that's exactly what they've done with these thrums. All of these thrums. So yeah, you want, you want strong units made out of dead units, but, you know, let's, let's try that with flying units. That can then threaten expansions. Have fun with that. <laughs> That's where the problem comes in now for Hydraulics. Like, these Thrums just do not care. Neither do Xerox and Hydraulics, however. This is... Is this going to be death? Santa Claus splitting out. Very well micro there. Not able to get any pickoffs of the Aerox, but able to avoid getting wiped by them as well. So it's a it's a win by it not being a loss. I'll call it that. It's it's a win by by maintenance. Yeah, by default, really. Though in all this time, Magical has gotten a third. As has Hydraulic, or yeah, has Hydraulics. Magical Hydraulics are getting ahead gradually in the macro game. 
as much as they've been doing well in the Pyre game, this is a solid advantage building up for Magical Hydraulics. Walter team simply has run out of steam. And there the Aerox come in. Thrum advantage still Santa's, thanks to the worthy upgrade, but it's not they're con they're not confident that's the case. Uh, this expansion coming in it couldn't be the worst time for them, but couldn't be the best time for Magical Hydraulics. Pushing in right away. Santa Claus looking for the surround, does have the red harvest. Hoping to get the kills themselves, but they're out of army. They got nothing. It's a 2v1 against Lightforger, and Lightforger simply cannot hold Magical Hydraulics. Get the win. Game two. We are on to game three in this series, this winner's finals. And we are going to see what it is Walter Team wants to play on. It's up to them. It's all up to them. So Walter Team is... We've seen kind of tricksy sometimes. Very aggressive in this in this approach. Let's see, what does Santa want? Well, either of them. Santa or Life Forger. Whichever map they want is the map we play on. That is that is how this works. Yes. Or wait. What? It's BO one. Sorry, for reference, the loser's bracket is best of one. Winner's best of three. Grand's best of five with a one game advantage to the winner of the winner's finals. So whoever wins this match gets a grand finals lead going in. And like with this game specifically, and then loses, yeah, loses best one. So yeah, just and it's gonna be embargo. We're back to embargo. Worked out for them last time. It makes sense they'd want to go back. I'm glad to see that the maps are being played relatively evenly. It's a good sign. Now we have the right game size for these three maps: Lost Province, Embargo, and Fool's Bay. The maps are all working. The maps are all. Maps people want to play. Which is great. We're seeing all of the maps. I'm glad to see it. They're, they're all good maps, so. I'm just. It's good to see. So we're going to be going to game three, and it looks like we are going to have a slight change of immortals. Because. Well. Turns out. Zol doesn't do too well on Embargo when you're trying to summon Zol a lot and there's not a lot of Pyre to do so with. So Lightforger instead opts to go for Orzum. And a quick aggression Orzum at that. I mean, Walter Team has been nothing if not aggressive this game. Even if it's been taking a couple minutes, two, three or four minutes even, to get their push set up to have a strong enough push to make it worth it, they have been nothing if not aggressive. Like, Walter team, they have been staking their ability to win on their ability to keep their opponents from doing anything after the first few minutes. Certainly able to basically attack, contain, expand. Attack, contain, expand. That has been Walter team's ma main mode of operation. This game looks to be no different. Blightforger and Santa Claus both, they are set up to get in. They are set up to get some Early Zentari pushes from Life Forger. Santa going from some er likely early. Hard to self can be early. Early as a call, actually. Could be Master Hunter, could be Zakal. Zakal would have the advantage of not being as easily countered if the Zentari get countered. We saw game one, Icors were. Like game one, take two, how strong Icors were. And those are an option for both Magical and Hydraulics. Not an option they appear to be investing in, but an option nonetheless. Something San and Magical, sorry, San and Lightforger apparently don't really seem to be worried about. So San and Lightforger opting for speed of army construction over resilience in the face of potential hard counters. Lucky for them, their opponents aren't going for the hard counters. It will be, it will have been the right decision, it turns out. It's a gamble, but it pays off, or it should pay off. Oh man, it's just yeah, don't don't let those teapots get in there. 
But to be fair, Magical is seeing how much Lightforger is investing in the Zentari. Not the most telling thing in the world, but still, like, your opponent's investing into that much Zentari. They clearly have a plan for what to do with it. And that's exactly what Hydraulics and Magical don't want to deal with. It's like, nope, we're going to... You want to go high aggression on early early buildings, early or sorry, early unit construction? Well, we'll do the exact same thing. In fact, not just the exact same thing, the exact same strategy as game one where, you know, go for the rocks. Take that out quickly, leave that opening. I mean, the shoe's in the other foot for who's playing what immortals, so Lightforger is now going to be the one having to deal with defending on multiple fronts and not being quite so mobile. Now, of course, whether or not they care remains to be seen, but that is going to be a consideration, and it's not one they've even scouted out. Like, remember, Magical Hydraulics at least spotted it coming. Walter Team has no clue. Well, not yet, anyway. They try to expand there. Yeah, they'll figure it out. In the meantime, they are blissfully ignorant of the vulnerabilities in their own expansion. This tower is going to get flanked. This expansion is pretty vulnerable. Overall, there's move, movement along the side. The only difference, really, is no one's playing Zol, so no one can threaten and just walk one unit in, summon Zol, and kill your expansion. That is not on the table. The one That is one thing that is giving Walter Team a, a better position to be in than they put Magical Hydraulics in in Game 1. Of course, as always, the first step here takes under control. It's exactly what Walter Team wants this 2v1 to turn into, but they can't really make it work. Unfortunately, without much support for the Zentari to give them, like, say, Magi, for instance, to give them range, they don't have a lot to work with here. So defensively, they're fine. Like, holding the line here, stopping Magical Hydraulics from pushing in, that's, that's an option for them. Moving forward? No. This is a stalemate. The center of the map, it belongs to both players, and it will for the foreseeable future. Now, that being said, Santa, as always, preparing the thrums, getting the harassment going. And also trying to at least open up everything in terms of positioning for towers. Now, how well that's going to work... Kind of, kind of goes down to this fight, actually. Hydraulics. Hydraulics playing it smart, going back, not letting anything come through, which means Sand and Lightforger, once again, don't have a lot of openings. I gotta say, opening that tower up, <laughs> good move for the Thrums. Like, very much a preparatory move for that Thrum harassment. Same time, Zentari. Do have the magic support. But the magic gets sniped out. Those magic get sniped out, the Zentari can't do much. I'm not getting an opening, but it's easy to snipe at the Magi when you're dealing with a bunch of ranged forces. That's, that is kind of what they do. Even that is not the focus. Hydraulics, not focusing on those Magi completely. And that push, this is not, I mean, it's, it's what I mean. There's that pressure coming through. Keep an eye on Sand and Lightforger and how much they're expanding this game. It's not likely to be as much as it has been in the previous matches. The flexibility isn't there. Hydraulics and Magical... They're looking at a solid, soft contain situation. Lightforger and Santa Claus. The Walter team. They're not pushing. Like, they're, they're trying to get some damage here and there, but... It's not like before. Where, you know, they're constantly attacking to expand. Now it's trying to hold the line. Of course, that being said, there's a... Okay, so here's the thing, though. The entire force is massed hunters. This is something that can be easily countered. Actually, even the forces that exist this is call alone. Ooh, that's brutal. Slightly out of position, a bit too far forward. Hydraulics letting Lightforger run roughshod over their army. And now Santa Claus can just upgrade everything. 
But yeah, I'm a little surprised we're not seeing Ze we're not seeing Dervish yet. Hallowers we probably will see that's currently being telegraphed, but I am surprised we're not seeing Dervish or Ikor because everything here, everything here will die to Dervish or Ikor. Like the entire magical hydraulics force is purely light units. It's all stuff that's gonna melt. But we're not seeing that push. We're seeing the tech. We're seeing a shift to Dread Sisters. Not a bad choice. I mean, the, still, you do have the... the dre Oh, wow. That's actually a lot of damage coming in from the Birthing Storm. Yeesh. But still, the push coming through. Nothing to really stop it other than... Other than spellcasting. A strength that Walsh team had in the first game is turning into a massive... Well, strength slash compensatory element of the first game turning into a massive weakness in the third. As much as Hydraulic Forces have been weakened to lesser extent magicals, it's just not enough to slow them down. That last hit point is the only one that matters, and every single one of those mass hunters still has theirs. Hallowers are out, but too little too late, as the front bases have been wiped out, contained coming in from magical and hydraulics, and the upgrades on top. I mean, Hallowers don't do a lot of splash damage. It really isn't their strength is getting rid of this. It's... It's not working. And behind this, Santa, like, Santa's at least providing a bit of pressure. Magical, though, is expanding. Two expansions were wiped for Walter team. Just putting them on the back foot as far as their economy goes, and that's the last place they need to be. They're already like, they're behind an expansion, they're behind an army, they're behind kind of on the right tech choices. In Magical Hydraulics, haven't even seen fit to really switch their tech. Despite, you know, a couple of dervishes would be enough to force away from this entire approach. A couple of dervishes, half dozen Nikors, it would be enough, but there aren't even any soul foundries. Sorry, there are soul foundries. There are not even any amber wombs. There's a soul foundry to get the hallowers, but not much else. Part of the strategy, of course, is you drop the hallowers in and then the Zentari can use that as a staging ground for range. Which is handy. We're seeing Light Forger take advantage of that. But the numbers... The numbers just aren't working out so well. And Magical's... Magical is falling behind. To be fair, Magical is starting to fall behind a bit. They did just expand. They don't have as much of an army investment right now. So that was the perfect time for Walter Team to strike. But it shouldn't take too long for Magic. I mean, Magical's very well set up to just rebuild everything. This is looking dire for Walter Team. I mean, they're holding the line. Magical Hydraulics holding the economy advantage. And again, how this opening here? Like, they have the potential for distraction. Ancient, however, forcing their hand. Magical Hydraulics pushing in, possibly a little half baked. Trying to get some salt breathing storms coming around the side here, which is slowing down Walter Team, but the Ancient is still likely to fall to the Walter Team. Hydraulics. Magical. Going. For, well, Hydraulics for the Spellcasters, Magical with the Behemoths. Getting the flank of the Behemoths. Doing a solid job here. Team Ice does get. Walter Team, rather, does get the, the Ancient. But at some cost. Like, they weren't able to get much territory beyond that. Opponents still have a solid position. Behemoths are on the field. And there's not a response to that from Walter Team at all. Lightforger, in fact, is supply capped. Like they, they need more production buildings. They don't have enough to build with. A bit of a gamble coming through here from Walter Team. Wanting to... Pull a distraction play. They do have the Hallowers to make that happen, actually. Like this is where we start to see the shift into the more aggressive style. But that surround coming through here from from Hydraulics. Magical at the top, not enough stuff able to shoot up in the position. And the surround coming in on Life Forge. They're getting broken up. Sand and Life Forge are getting separated, trying to go for a flank onto Magical Hydraulics. Magical Hydraulics able to rely pretty heavily on the Kittle for damage. 
That means that they don't get a lot of losses in the process. Those behemoths, as those numbers build up for hydro for magical, it's just going to become easier to to repel these attacks. Like the howlers just get kind of wasted on the on the kittle. And then from here, where's Hydraulics going to go? To the side. To the flank. The center has pretty much been lost, too. I mean, Sand and Lightforger seeding the center. The expansion is also open. But that center being lost, the tower goes down. And Magical Hydraulics can just continue pushing. And the Walter team is contained into their natural plateau. Not a whole lot they have right at the moment. Tech wise, they're not able to do much. Lightforger shifting the thrones. So far, Lightforger's role has essentially been build up tech while Santa Claus gets the main mass of the army. Which similar similar to magical hydraulics. Magical going to protect themselves. Or rather, magical going for the air tech, hydraulics going for the caster tech. Unfortunately for San and for Walter Team, Magical going for the Behemoths, that's a huge boon for free units. They just don't get in the same way with, well, with Thrones, Hallowers, anything Orzum can really throw out there. But again, Orzum does have options to, like, hold the line or push forward. I think Dervishes might be being too late now, but earlier on, they had a place. I mean, even now, might actually not be a bad idea to have a couple dervishes. Like, a handful of dervishes just to provide extra support. Help get rid of some of these mass hunters. But we're not going to see that. We're going to see more and more Hallowers come through. We're going to see the attempt from Lightforger to turn Thrones into the anti-army force. That's going to be the... That's going to be the path the Walter team has chosen to take. And it's a bit of a risky path. Magical, their, their max production, or max population, Hydraulics and Magical, both able to get the next massive chunk of Pyre. Expect a rain of blood or two. We popped. They go for the push. I mean, defense attempt. The, something. But why go that way? Like... There's a big rock point face here. Magical Hydraulics could go for... Not going to! That's actually going to go straight into the Siege Maws. Risky move, but with enough behemoths, it might be worth the shot. Magical dropping the Rain of Blood. Extra health coming from that. The behemoths are all out of Kittle. And not a whole lot has moved. The press actually kind of turned the other way. Santa and Lightforger able to get that damage done. If they can start taking out behemoths, that could be... That could be devastating to Magical Hydraulics. Hydraulics, the second Reign of Blood, trying to keep that pressure on. Several of the Siege Mods did fall, but those are basically free. How was able to do their job? Can the Behemoth stay alive, though? And the answer appears to be yes. Not enough anti-air from Walter Team. The Behemoth ultimately able to push in Santa with the response Reign of Blood, but very few forces to actually take advantage of it, particularly up in the sky. So we'll pro give props to Santa. They did switch to Icors to help deal with all these light units. Especially, the, I mean, the Kittle are light units, so dealing with those quickly is still important. And that is actually enough. That Reign of Blood turns things around, but Magical, they retain a significant population advantage. They retain a significant army value advantage. Mostly in the Behemoths. Like, almost entirely in Behemoths. But it's worth noting, that, that attack... That's allowed a four base advantage for Magical Hydraulics. They are basically going to do fine because everything's mining out. Like, everything's starting to mine out in the main bases. We're getting close to. Like, in the next few minutes, it's going to be... It's going to be Magical Hydraulics being the only ones here able to actually build new forces. Sand and Lightforger are looking a little bit grim.
Like, holding the lines all well and good, but that's assuming your opponent's going to break themselves against you again. What is Sandalite Fortress building, though? They have, they have thrones being built up gradually. If you, okay, less than gradually. More than gradually. It's actually... Light Forger going pretty hard on the thrones. But Light Forger only has, like, a couple of alloy mining bases. So thrones are handy, but, again, where's the pushback? Where's the actual... Where's the territory control on their side? Where? How are they going to be able to, to make... To make this extension, expansion a weakness rather than a strength for Magical and Hydraulics. Because right now, Magical and Hydraulics don't need to care. They can take out these thrones. It's not a big deal. It's like, are are they going to be separated? Is it going to be taking advantage of them while they're separated? Or is Walt's team going to be trying to attack in multiple fronts all at once to take out these expansions? Like, None of those things are happening. Walter's team seems to be trying to build up a significant force of thrums and then go for a push with that. An understandable approach, but again, Magical doesn't need to worry about that. And now, Thvine coming in, Hydraulics, Magical on all sides. Another rain of blood to keep Hydraulics, well, to keep Hydraulics and Magical's forces tip-top shape. Thrones doing decent work to hold the line. But again, it's just a matter of, can you get rid of the Behemoths? If the Behemoths start going down, it's something. But the Thrones, the Thrones are the ones falling. Lightforger not able to maintain this against all the mass Hunters being deployed. Hydraulic and Magical wiping out the last of the Walter team's force. Space is wide open. There is nothing left to hold the line. Desperate spellcasting from Walter team is all they have left. And Magical and Hydraulics taking that front line base, breaking through the, the defenses, breaking through all the siege maws light for, or that Santa Claus put up. And now just... They're... Cracking up that last few... Yeah, the last few bases are gone. Lightforger has thrown it, and so has Santa. Magical and Hydraulics will move on to the Grand Finals with a one-game advantage. While Walter team, they will be in loser side fighting against Dragon Zoo. Now, mind you, it is best of one loser side. They actually ended up playing an extra game, but whatever. We'll be seeing Magical and Hydraulics soon enough. Then we'll be I'll be back on sooner or later, but for now, it is going to be the Losers Finals. So, Walter Team against Dragon Zoo. Rematch, really. Rematch, best of one. Walter Team did win 2-0 in the previous game, having gone for some sneaky Zol stuff. See if they can pull it off again. We do go into best of one. We're likely to see even more weirdness. Because it's best of one. So interestingly, Santa is choosing Fool's Bay. We saw it before with against Magical Hydraulics. That didn't work out super well. So I'm curious if they have some weird plans for that. We'll find out. The winner of this, of course, will be going to fight against Magical and Hydraulics in the Grand Finals. See what they managed to make work, because Magical and Hydraulics, they're tough! Santa and Lightforger got close, and they might have another shot at it, but they are tough. Do you think that, I mean, Drago and Zoe did see what was coming. They have an idea of the weird Walter stuff, or weird, not Walter stuff, the weird Zol stuff. Oh, yeah, well, anyway, the weird Zol stuff that was being pulled out. But it seems like Walter seemed like they're kind of Zoled out. Like, they did the Zol stuff, and that's that's fine. I mean, maybe they'll try to pull it out in the Grand Finals, because this is something Santa does all the time. They'll play kind of normally up until Grand Finals, and then Grand Finals comes and they just go ham with the weird the weird cheesy strats. Because, you know, they kind of can. And at that point, they kind of have to, because, well, what else are you going to do? Like, when you get to that point, it's like, you know, that that's what it is. All right. Let's see what they managed to get going here, though. It is going to be double Mala for Walter Team against double Orzum for Dragon Zoo. I can't say the double Orzum part surprised me from much as Zoo. Drago surprised me a little bit, but then Drago hasn't been playing a lot recently, so I don't know what their style is now. 
they were the ones that were going for a lot of like weird expansion patterns and hidden stuff, a lot of proxies, a lot of weird cheese. But the King of Cheese title has really gone to the Santa. And I don't know that Drago is keen on taking that back, at least not in a 2v2 scenario. And neither is even aggression the main option here. I mean, Santa and Lightfoot are having gone for Mala early. Unsurprisingly, not going for hyper aggression because they're not going for that early Zol push. But they're still going for the kind of sort of four minute ish aggression thing that we're doing a lot of. Like, hey, let's get some, let's get some altars and then get you know some mass hunters. Maybe mass hunters. Like, one goes mass hunter, one goes a call. It's not a bad idea. Granted, Dragons don't have a similar choice they can make because they could be like you know someone goes Absolver, or someone goes Antari. Or one person texts Air, the other person texts Halivers. Something like that. I mean, they might do that, might not do that. It's just, it's, I've noticed that's been a bit, like, we saw it a lot last game. Like, Double Mala, Hydraulics, Magical, where they split tech. Actually, both both sides split tech last game. Well, sort of. I mean, you kind of have to when it's Mala and Orzum. But still, the point is that the you know, the heavy air was more the Orzum responsibility, and the ground force is more the Mala responsibility, and the spellcast is more the Mala responsibility. So, we got two doubles up of an immortal. Split techs kind of been the way things have been going. Right, well, Light Forger. Oh, wait, what the? Who's this? Oh, what? Oh, there's the sneaky play from Drago, setting up the Tower Foundation right outside of your opponent's base. Then you pop up there, then watch as Zoe sets up a tower, or at least that's what Drago's trying to make happen. It's like, there we go. Early push from Drago and Wajah Zoe. Okay, you know what? King of Cheese title might might go back to Drago and Zoe. They didn't go for an expansion. They went straight for double altars in Tari, trying to get the push into tower. No pillar, though, and that lack of pillar is doing them a lot of damage. <laughs> Oof, man. Yeah, the, the quick as a call coming in from Zen and Lightforger. Perfect response. Absolutely perfect response here. The exact thing they needed. Splitting up Dragonzo's forces. The Dragonzo don't have any range to work with. There are Absolvers in here, but they don't have any support force now that the call could just come back here and kill them. Tower's not even up yet. Unfortunately, the coordination did not work out here, and that means... Santa and Lightforger have made this cheese fail. Dragon Zo have nothing. They don't have any expansions. They don't have any army behind this. They're trying to build up something, but it's really not much. Getting Proxy Scepter on top of that with that Drago's Proxy Angelarium. Is Santa going to see that? I don't see that. Nope, it's on the high ground, so no, they're not going to see that at all. Well, that is certainly going to be a potential issue. Okay, it's got to be the hint. It's got to be the hint now. Although, to be fair, Scepter's a really good choice right now. There's, not, there's no anti here. Some Masked Hunter shifting into... Okay, this... You have the Neurosite, you have the, the Bone Canopy... We get thrones, we get thrones. Okay, so the scepters, their days are numbered, but they are at least holding the line. The question, of course, is where are those scepters coming from? And the answer, of course, is right here. Not sure Santa's gonna be able to actually find that out. Nor do they care. Light Fortune and Santa deciding, okay, well, our opponent's going for kind of a proxy cheese thing. We knocked out their main army. And we can push across the map and do some damage because they cannot do much to us. Well, we set up to crack back against all these scepters. Confidence, I think, is well-placed. I mean, the thrums are coming in. The scepters can't deal with them. Sentinels are being built up, but again, there's ground-based anti here being constructed as well. So any attempt to move into the backyard of Walter Team's bases is going to be met with stiff resistance. While at the same time, Life Forger able to find a backyard approach of their own, taking out forward soul foundry 
should be able to, from there, take out the expansion. And that means Lightforgers got... Yeah, got the advantage here. Santa's holding the fort. Lightforgers breaking their opponents. And Dragon Zoo doesn't just now maybe barely have the army to actually contend with this. But they're much more focused on taking this forward position. They're trying to break this. But, you know, they did leave a tower foundation their opponents can now use. And they don't have enough ant here to really make the Thrums question their life choices. So there's nothing they can shoot up now. Walter Team's got this in the bag on the main base. The expansion, break without canceling either. Drago has nothing at home to stop everything Life Forge is throwing at them. Santa Claus is able to just slowly but surely whittle away at this approach, forcing a retreat. Because nothing can shoot up. And once that Ancillary is found, well, the proxy pushes over. Heck, it doesn't even need to, need to be found, to be honest. There's no money. Like, Drago... Okay, Drago has some money, actually, to be fair, but... There's no reason to go for that. The defense needs to be at home. Like, <laughs> Lightforge has really exposed a major opening that Drago hadn't accounted for. And with Santa Claus flanking, not a whole lot here that I can actually can deal with air, the one castigator, which, you know, that can just be dealt with pretty quickly. Oh, wow, that was... That was a dead absolver. That was a very dead absolver. And the castigator is not going to last much longer either. There is no anti here once again. And here come the thrums. Santa Claus able to just... Able to, like, bring up the rear. Wipe everything out. Light Forger Light doesn't even care. As long as they're dealing damage, as long as they're applying pressure, we're seeing the expansions. We're seeing the further tech. We're seeing a bit of damage being done, actually, by Santa Claus. Or, sorry, by Watch this out, but... Meh. For the most part, a Walter team doesn't care. Like, if they win this, great. If Or they win with this attack, great. If they don't win with this attack, they have contingencies. Dragon Zoo is going to have to basically beat back this army completely and start doing a counterattack, and they just don't have the army. Drago is completely out of forces. Zoe has a few, but Drago's, Drago's out of the game. Drago's given up. Walter team. They can break Zao. They have the game in the bag. The Zao's not doing too badly at coming back here. It's just... Well... That second wave. That Walter team hasn't even bothered to send. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. That's going to be a problem for Zoe. And there it is. Recognized and accepted. GG's from Dragon Zoo. Walter team gets the run back against Magical and Hydraulics. So, we are going to be going for a very short break before we get to Grand Finals. But do stay tuned. Grand Finals will be up in just a couple of minutes. So, now's the time if you need to go get a bathroom break or need to go get some popcorn or grapes or a small other small treats, chocolates of some kind, perhaps. I don't know. A collection of mice. I don't know. Perhaps they're cats watching. Or small birds. Whatever you like. Go get that. We'll be back in a couple minutes. And until then, stay tuned. And we are going to be getting into the Grand Finals. That's right. The Grand Finals. Balter Team up against Magical and Hydraulics. A rematch of what we saw before. And it's it should be good. I mean, we saw, we saw the last game. It was very much a... Clear, well, not not a clear win, not clear win one way or the other. How this is going to actually play out remains to be seen because neither of these players has that clear advantage. They have, none of them are really set up for a clear win, and no one wants to play Zal. Nobody wants to play Zal. Everyone's done with Zal. Oh, was there a gentleman's agreement not to play Zal or something? That's fine. I just I'm curious. Like, I, I didn't expect that, but okay. Oh, I am loud. Yeah, I, I didn't expect... Oh, am I? Sorry, I'm a little worried I might be getting too loud. But anyway, let's get into the game proper. If I'm too loud, please, please let me know. But yeah, no one's playing Zell. 
Mala and Ajari. Mala and Ajari are it. Mala and Ajari are all. Mala and Ajari are everything. So that's Mala and Ajari. Mala and Ajari all day, every day. Kind of funny because my two mains at this point. <laughs> So, the question then becomes, what do they do with it? Walter team goes highly aggressive. Just all the all the mast hunters all day. Magical and hydraulics. That's, yeah, not much different. Well, magical hydraulics being a little bit more economical. Magical is actually being quite a bit more economical. Hydraulics. Hydraulics seems to figure there's something up. They've seen, okay, there's, there's just quadruple altar. Like, Sand and Life Forger want blood, and they want it now. And they're not even going to wait until the Red Harvest is available to collect it. If it spills in the ground with nobody to there, nobody there to grab it, they're happy. They do not care. It's fine. Absolutely fine for them. So, that's a bit of a problem. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be... It's going to be very much all or nothing for this first game. Which I'm not surprised by. I mean, Santa and Lightford, or Santa in particular, tends to be very risky in the grand finals. Like, which is almost always you think, you know, Santa, I thought you had some weird strategy. You were playing very normal. Grand finals match comes in, bam, weird cheese, weird strategy. Everything just goes completely off the rails. Like, oh, there's our Santa. <laughs> like, that's that's how it usually goes, and this appears to be no exception. I mean, it's not like they weren't being aggressive before, but man, this is this is a a step above that. So, very quickly, we'll have 32 Masked Hunters bearing down on Magical and Hydraulics. They only have the Soul Foundry and handful of Masked Hunters of their own. Could get some Dervish. Might get some Absolvers. Either way, it would be something, but they gotta do that fast. Dervish are on the way. Is it gonna be fast enough? It comes down to how quickly Sand and Lightforge are pushed through. Not going in the right direction. The Dervish will have a chance to build out. Santa and Lightforger do have an opportunity to take out Magicals, at the very least. Eliminating some of their defenses. Getting the setup. The Dervish. Is it going to be enough? I mean, it should be fine, but it's a question of positioning now. Reinforcements are on the way for Walter Team. Threat, of course, being... Can Walter Team get rid of Hydraulics' bases, Hydraulics' outposts, before these Dervish can do their job? Because more Dervish are on the way. Like, these two Dervish, they're having a bit of trouble, sure, but they're more on the way. It's going to be an increasing problem. Is that going to be enough? And if Santa Claus and Life Fortress can't hold this, can they hold the counterattack, which is inevitably coming as the Dervish have found their mark, surrounded by Hydraulics and Magical, Walter Team's force is forced to retreat. A little bit of tech has been developed. Is it going to be enough? The Neurocyte's only just now building. Zikals will not be up in time. Unless kiting can be much better on the defensive than the offensive for Walter Team. These Dervish are going to have the time of their lives just dancing through their opponents. Lifeforger looking to find a flank. It's... Not managing to accomplish all that much. But the Dervish aren't going to contest the tower. So at the very least, Magical and Hydraulics, they're into a stalemate position. Their early push did some damage, did some good, but did it do enough? Looks like maybe not. It's... Well, it remains to be seen. You know, it's something that's going to be... It's going to come down to, like, how does this Pyre acquisition work? Going to... Was that? Yep, that was going to Magical. Magical stole it! Magical gets the surround! Lightforge are losing all of their masked hunters. Bought, time has, however, been bought. There are to call on the way. So the production infrastructure is at least going to be repurposed to something that is a little bit more effective against their opponent's, their opponent's composition. But Hydraulics and Magical, did they even care anymore? <laughs> Seven Dervishes coming around the back. Man, that's got to hurt Santa Claus's soul. Being torn to pieces by dervishes. <laughs> like, Santa loves these units. They're Santa's favorite. Or they were, anyway, at one point. Sad. 
Being betrayed. Being betrayed by the unit you loved. But so it is in war. So it goes. That being said, Walter Team has like the calls is allowing them to stabilize a little bit. Not exactly a when she's failed scenario as it stands. Though magical hydraulics is kind of a matter of time. Like magical hydraulics still have the advantage. Life Forger is still kind of behind an army value. Santa Claus going for the tower push. But doing it alone is not fruitful. And by the time they regroup, there's hydraulics around the back. There's hydraulics harassing again. Are they gonna be pushed? Oh, they get some kills. Not a, not able to push them off too much, but hey, able to get some damage. Sand and Life Forger. That center control may not work out well for them. Again, hydraulics and magical. Going for those rocks. It's a solid idea. Walter team really. Really gave a good choice there. Is that going to pay off? Well, they're pivot back to the tower. It's no problem. Santa and Magical just going back and forth on this one. It's like neither of them can really hold that Santa. Neither of them can really take those rocks. Santa does have better firepower, though. Santa will actually be able to take it much faster. The openings there has been spotted. But... Walter team, they have that advantage there. They can push in as well. Problem, of course, being the Wardens will not play nice. The call can't shoot up, so Santa Claus cannot engage. Of course, the engagement coming in here on the towers. Hydraulic catches up. Light Forger, the only, only one who can deal with Hydraulic's army, and they're not focusing on it. Losing everything that can contend with the Wardens, and now the retreat is required. Back to the tower. Can Hydraulics and Magical push this? They don't believe they can right now. Going for the regroup. Looking to find positioning around the side that'll work better for them. Want to group, want to heal up. Want to keep Santa and Lightforger from maintaining any kind of map control. Because if Santa and Lightforger get that map control, they do win. Getting that map control has proven to be a bit of a challenge, though. Especially with Mala. Like, with Zola, it was fine, but with Mala, it's not working out so well for them. Still, the Dervish, the Dervish getting surrounded, getting wiped out, but that's at the cost of Magical's flank coming through, wiping out everything that destroyed the Dervishes. Really, that was just freeing a population for Magical and Hydraulics. Walter team getting everything wiped out. Center control is lost. Their main base is wide open. They have some defenses, but not much else. Getting the Aerox to st stave off the Warden. Santa at least has some preparations, but it's not going to be enough to stop everything. The forces continue. Walter team able to get... Able to remuster. I'm gonna, is this base going to go down? Uh, not quite. Not quite. The Warden's... The Warden's going to make it happen, though. There's no real threat. The, even the Aerox coming in. What? One Warden goes down? Two, maybe? Yeah, one goes down. Just not their concern. Hydraulics and Magical have retaken the center. They have retaken every... They've gotten full map control now. Walter team... Trying to at least get, like, salvage something out of this. Salvage upgrades, maybe they take... Take the base. The, the rock wall isn't gone. This base is still secure-ish. But they gotta get that army going. Like, really, you don't have the opportunity to take the base. It's it's all or nothing on getting that army built back up. Santa's gonna go for it. Risky move. Magical takes the time, rotates back. Do they see it? I don't know if they saw it. I don't know if it matters, honestly. Santa is just not able to defend. Like, 
as it stands, either Magical realizes that the expansion is there and not a threat, or I think therefore Sand is not going to be rebuilding fast enough, or just doesn't care. Figures that we've won two fights already. We can just get the third and it's over. And with the Pyro Advantage on top of that, it's going to be that much harder for Walter Team to push back. And, oh, right. It's not best of one, by the way. It's in best of five, but Magic Life Relics do have that first game advantage. And there, okay, cancelled. Santa at least salvages it. But like I said, that's kind of been exposed. Santa, do they really have no, no, they have no ether. Huh. Yeah, three, three extractors. Three extractors and going for a Zakala heavy army. Yeah, you don't get a lot of ether very quickly. Like Santa, very much focused on that tech. Not enough focused on the numbers, which Magical has, ad has numbers on them, has tech on them. Has to some extent unit type advantage. And then, of course, most of Hydraulics' army is flying. Which, Walter Team, they have, they have some answers. They have a little bit to deal with it. Whether they have enough? That's just the question of numbers. Gaul is back to Walter Team, just is low on numbers. Free reign for Hydraulics and Magical, though. And we saw it before Game 3 of the Winners' Finals. Walter Team stuck in their base, not able to do much. Just a repeat of that situation. Though, I will give Santa credit. They did manage to sneak out an expansion. Actually, sneak out a couple expansions. Yeah, Santa's gonna go hard. They need that ether really badly, so of course they will... May not last, though. This is the perfect timing for Magical Hydraulics to go for the attack. Surround comes through. Combination of healing and salvation on death. There is no way to wipe this army. But Wall of Team is forced to defend. They have to push as far as they can, but they can only lose. They cannot win this fight. At best, a draw. But no, they do not even get that. Magical Hydraulics pushing in harder and harder. It's Walter Team gets completely destroyed in the front lines. And that's gonna be it. That's gonna be very much nearly it. Walter team has lost frontline bases. They've lost basically everything but their natural or their mains, really. And the sneaky base of Santa's set up. This is looking dire, and it is not looking like it's gonna get any better anytime soon. And so too thinks Lightforger. Santa being a little bit more resilient on this. Going for upgrading the moats. Her upgraded symbiotes come to actually doing some damage. Surprisingly enough. Not enough, but something. Anyway, Magical Hydraulics, take game two. So it's gonna be up to Okay. It's gonna be up to Magical and Hydraulics which one they think is gonna work for this. Yeah. Because, oh no, sorry, not Magical Hydraulics. Walter Team, up to Walter Team. And Santa's picking the map. So it'll work. <laughs> embargo it is. All right. They want a run back on Embargo. Who am I to say otherwise? Well, I suppose I'll just give them their wish, because why not? Is that enough? Anyway. All, okay, it's going to be all Mala all day today. <laughs> this, this next match. Bit of a spoiler. Oh, not not quite. Ooh. Okay, we're we're gonna have a Zol again, and it's not gonna be on the Walter team. Kind of surprisingly enough, to me at least, it's gonna be Hydraulics. Hydraulics goes for Zol, and gotta watch out for the thing because it turns out getting called out by YJZO that I missed some Zol Zol pickoffs from them taking out some of Light Fortress bases. Sorry about that, Wajazo. I shall keep an eye out going forward to make sure I don't miss that, because that is the main pressure that Zol applies, is they can just pop into your... But right now, that, that'll be changed. That, do not, do not fret. That has already been changed for the next patch. Like, Zol is not supposed to have the damage boost against buildings. But the...
But yeah, the the question is how much Hydraulics is going to try to be sneaky about it and how much Hydraulics is going to try to be straightforward about it. And that's a big question. Like, I don't know how it's going to work. I, I don't know. It's kind of remains to be seen. Hmm. So, yeah, Walter team is definitely definitely staring down the barrel of their own hubris. Gonna go again for that double... Well, double's a call, looks like, this time. It's kind of like last time. Hydraulics going for looking like early Ikor. And Magical... Magical is just sort of playing you know, a standard kind of economic game. Doesn't really want to focus too much on aggression quite yet. Which is fair. Not sure if it's the best idea, but it's fair. In any event. Lightforger and Santa, both. Lightforger first. I mean... This is it for them for the tournament. Like, they need to win every single game from this game forward if they want to actually win this tournament. Because that's the only real option. If they lose this, tournament's over. Goes to Magical Hydraulics. If they win this, then they get another shot. And another shot. It's like... Yeah. Walter Team Reverse Sweep! Fighting? Do you do the do you do the Korean thing here? I don't I don't know. Is that still the Korean thing? I haven't seen Starcraft in Soul. I don't know if the if the person if the fighting thing is still a thing. I don't know why I went for that then. I feel I just feel silly now. Kind of exposed myself. <laughs> anyway. Like, am I hip with the youth? Am I hip with the youth? I wish to know. Have I lost my touch with the youths? Yeah, probably. Anyhow, doesn't matter. I was I never had touch with the youths. Much like Lightforger and Santa, never had to worry about running <laughs> Wait, no, that doesn't make sense at all. I, I had as much as Hydraulics and Magical didn't have touch on the center of the map because Oh boy, this is a... Uh, yeah, Mass Icor, not really the option to go for when your opponents have gone- Or rather, Mass Call, the option to go for your opponents are going to go for Mass Icor. Absolutely the right counter here from Walter Team. Magical Hydraulics, I don't know that they have much options, honestly. They're getting a Bone Canopy. Do they live long enough to use it? I mean, Walter- It's kind of like Walter Team's hesitation is the only question. How long is Walter Team going to- hang out just trying to play it safe because the longer they play it safe the more this bone canopy is actually going to be a threat and it looks like walter team is confident moving in mm, no they have to move in they okay this is actually walter team is playing it too safe like they're actually going to lose their main momentum advantage because they're not going in here those thrums are going to come out, and it's going to be over. Like right, magical hydraulics, they've they've gotten the game back in the they've gotten the game back in at least a reasonable position. They they can potentially take this back. Especially since the echoes are also not entirely dead. So, not only that, thrums come in. The obvious counter is mass hunters. Well, the mass hunters are going to be stopped by the echoes. So, Walter team in a bit of a bind. As it turns out, they're going to be going for some Amber Womantier. That'll help. Get some defenses. That'll help. But ultimately, yeah. Walter seems in a bit of a bind. Lightforger is the only one even remotely prepared for this. And that's still putting them on the back foot. Still giving a bit of a revenge on map control for Hydraulics and Magical. And as much as Walter Team looking to avenge that revenge, it's only going to go so far. And as always, Magical up in the top, taking out those rocks. So 
Sand and Lightforge are looking to hold the center. It's... Is it going to matter if they lose those rocks? Like, those rocks... Those rocks are pretty big. That's pretty important. They... I mean, again, it's the same threat either way. So... But in neither case of these Orzum players. Like, that, that's against Orzum where he had less mobility, but... Against Zol and Mala, like, I mean, it's that's a thing, but... Zol and Mala have more options to be mobile. To actually kind of just go back and forth as they need to. Not to mention, probably gonna expand more, too. Like, honestly, Magical Hydraulics, they have the Zol. They can threaten bases. They can just expand. It's not really a, as big of a threat. Of course, that's assuming they can get to this army, which... Now does have reasonable anti-air. Santa just Santa Lightforge dropping all the fire. Making this fight try to push their way. A bit of a surround against them. Magical and Lightforge are getting broken on the right flank. Or their left flank. Their right is getting surrounded. Santa just break it down. That tower falling being the biggest move. The Ikor is trying their best but cannot find any damage. Hydraulics with half of a dead army. And Magical looking... Looking to maybe upgrade something to get something back. Get some... Make up some of the loss. But it's not able to hold the line. The forces were simply too weak before they got upgraded. And that is... That is going nowhere. Magical with the Birthing Storm. At least providing a bit of a slowdown. Sand and Light Forger don't want to push in too hard into that. And actually more Thrums on the way. Hydraulics and Magical did... They lost... They lost something. They lost a tower. They lost some forward presence. But they didn't lose that expansion. So they actually are okay. And now... Ikor and Thrum around the back side of the map. Trying to affect something. Scouting. Distraction. They won't be able to get much damage in the main base due to the Omnivores. But even a distraction is going to be enough to at least keep keep a 2v1 from happening. Or allow a 2v1 for Hydraulics and Magical. It's just, there's Hydraulics just wants to bait that out. They can bait out, they can bait out some of those forces and then, you know, they can get that surround on and do significant damage. Life Forger, making sure nothing has been going on under their noses. Same with Hydraulics, both everyone just making sure they have full knowledge of where their opponents are on the map, what they've expanded to, and everything. And you don't really want to leap before you figure out where your opponents like where your opponents have. But again, magical hydraulics do kind of have the advantage of being able to expand a bit faster. They have more ways of threatening expansions than Walter Team does. Ah! Uh, no, don't don't throw your forces away. Distraction's handy and all, but those, I, those thrums are going to be the right spot. Ikor is able to get damage in on the map. Uh, Hydraulic's able to get the flank. The tech choices are paying off for them. Same time, surround from Magical on the north side of the fight. Magical is breaking and retreating. Red Harvest coming from both Santa and Lightforger is simply too much to push through. Not worth the cost. Now Santa and Lightforger will be coming in with that much of a stronger army in the next fight. Hydraulics and Magical relying entirely on their numbers going forward as... Well, upgrade your forces, they get that much stronger, and Magical didn't... Doesn't have as much of that. Most of their upgraded forces got killed. So their worthy forces got killed. Now, Hydraulic can take out this base with the pressure. That's going to be something. I mean, the main win will be... They, if they cause a distraction, then it allows for a 1v2. Or a 2v1, rather. They do cause a distraction. But Hydraulics and Magical aren't rotating in to take advantage of it. Or Magical, rather, isn't rotating to take advantage of it. So no 2v1 for Magical Hydraulics. To be fair, it's not that far away. Like, it does provide some separation. It provides a few seconds of a 2v1 advantage, which can be enough. With, you know, enough firepower, enough alpha damage, it can be enough. And we might actually see that now. 
Santa going a little too far forward, overextending, losing a lot of forces to a birthing storm. While Hydraulics and Magical continue to build up in the back lines. Ancient currently in Santa and Life Fortress hands. But hey, Magical doesn't even care. Magical's like, okay, fine, you want to take that? Cool, I'll just wipe your base out. Now you got to make a choice. Do you want to take the Ancient? Do you want to hold the center? Or do you want to save your economy? Because you're not going to save your economy like this. That's for darn sure. Oh no. Hydraulics trying to hold at least a little bit. The flanking comes through. Oh, nice. Nice and flood with those Icors. The Ancient will still likely fall to Walter Team, but if Magical Hydraulics can get can inflict losses in the meantime, that'll still be an effective use of that. And indeed they do. Of course, all this time, it's an expansion in the corner for Hydraulics. Lightforger, similar, but later in the game. Magical Hydraulics, they've been applying that army advantage. Which they kind of have to, because Hydraulics has been playing it a bit risky. They are aware, like, as things are going to go on, Santa and Lightforger move to more units the Icors can deal with. But can the Icors survive this? Santa once again applying Pyre to force a retreat. Off the back of the Red Harvest. Santa Life Forger both. That's only going to last so long. The retreat is no longer necessary. Hydraulics and Magical can regroup here, but Hydraulics is out of position. Fast units are no. Hydraulics cannot engage. Has to go back around the long way. Magical now risking a 2v1. Dodges the Birthing Storms. But the real question is, what comes next? More and more Icors coming in from Hydraulics. Again, they are... They are reasonably well positioned, but the... This, the thing is, there's too many frontliners from Santa Claus that can just block up the Icors. Like, well-placed flanks will give the Walter team trouble. But if the Walter team can maintain a cohesive formation throughout the fight, then those Icors can't really do anything. Especially in this choke point like here, this choke point that Walter Team is looking to engage in is going to be entirely their advantage. Hydraulics Magical trying to prevent it from getting that far. Whether it matters, it's kind of a question of what happens with Life Fortress forces here. They have moved out of position, but it's just too scary to go in for Hydraulics Magical. Now, Hydraulics going for a bit of a defensive posture. Actually, both of them. Like, Hydraulics, Magical, both. Realizing that the fight's going to be taken to them. Being sure to set up. Prompt, potentially prompting response over in the corner. With the Icor push. Just trying to take out Life Forger's expansion. Life Forger kind of head on them in the defenses. But nothing in position to stop the Icors. Same time, the battle is joined. The defensive position is not working out for Hydraulics at all, and Magical's forces still mostly on route. They're not built. They weren't built yet when the fight started. Pima's coming in, trying to hold the line. Birthing Storm's all over the place. Magical, essentially in a 1v2. Hydraulics' defenses have fallen. It's coming down. Can Magical make this pay off? So many Birthing Storms, so much setup, so much weakness. Santa's starting to falter. Light Forge are getting surrounded. The payoff is real. It was a risky play from Hydraulics and Magical, but they made it work. Continuing the push, the tower is gone. Santa's forces are nearly moot. Light Forger's losing theirs just afterwards. Reinforcements coming in for Santa and Light Forger. And the second tower looks bound to fall. The army advantage for Magical way too great. Gotta be careful, though. Birthing Storms are turning the other way. Start losing these... Yeah, start losing the Masked Hunters. Birthing Storm. But the timing was fine. Magical... Nothing was able to jump on Magical when, as they lost those Masked Hunters. And now the opening for the Ancient is there. Light Forger expanding quite a bit in the corners, or maintaining the expansion as well as they can. But it's gonna be enough. Is, is, there's not enough time for that to actually come to fruition. Unless this defense can be helped. 
unless Walter Team can stop Magical Hydraulics from sweeping around the side, taking out the expansions, taking out the pocket expansion, taking out the corner expansion, possibly prompting a counterattack, but there's just not the forces. Like, Walter Team looking to defend the choke point into the pocket expansion. Rain and Blood drops. Trying to get as much as damage as possible for Magical Hydraulics. Like this, this fight is kind of forced, but Life Forger can't take it. Santa Claus not even trying. There's one base down. The remaining bases will likely soon fall, and that corner base is gone. Life Forger's economic advantage is becoming a well attempt at an economic attempt at an economic advantage is becoming a liability. Hydraulics stopping. They're trying to stop defense here, but it's really it's split. It's a split that's not going to really amount to much. A base was destroyed, but there's three more bases for Hydraulics and Magical they've got on their side. Walter Team cannot hold their own expansions, cannot maintain their own army in the field. Lightforger, they have one last ditch attempt after losing three bases back to back. They have Behemoths up. There are Dread Sisters from Santa Claus. There's options to break up and convert their opponent's army into Kittle. But the Walter team has that and not much more. The only the one thing I'm going for them, though, is Hydraulics and Magical are completely separated. A couple of 2v1s happen. First 2v1 against Hydraulics, forcing a route, but just picking off those forces one by one. It's Super expensive resonance getting wiped out. Magical coming to try to assist from behind. They will be able to cut off reinforcements, but they won't be able to stop the 2v1. They won't be able to stop. They might be able to stop the bases from being destroyed. Cutting off the reinforcements will at least help with that. But Hydraulics has no defensive line to fall back to. The resonance were the defensive line, and they're gone. Still, Magical took out three bases at the cost of a handful of resonance. Hydraulics will be able to rebuild those. So in effect, Magical and Hydraulics still managed to take an advantage, but not as much of one as they would have liked. Santa and Lifeforger, that that attack, that 2v1, put them back in the, at least back in the army game. Again, those expansions, losing the expansions is a big blow. Now, Magical's taken back. Looks like I can take all of them. Damn, one of them for sure. He has expansion to the corner one, and both two of them having actually been upgraded. Corner one being the main one that could be flipped over to magical. But the bigger question is this push here. Is this going to be it? Magical Hydraulics going for it. Santa and Light Forger out of position to defend. The expansion is done. Magical Hydraulics are on the low ground. Santa. Looking to set up a second line of defense. Also preparing for a flank, but no flank is forthcoming. The base has been wiped out. That's all that really matters. Santa scouting out to see what magical hydraulics have built up. What they're up to. And the answer is getting that next ancient. Seen before, get the ancient, get the rain of blood. Magical just pushes that to their advantage. Santa does have enough pyre to push that themselves. I mean, Red Harvest has been their main focus. They want to make those losses not quite sting quite so much. Oh, but you know what? You know what? These things even more stealth units. Stealth assassin is coming around the back while you lose the Pyre Ancient, while you're caught holed up in your base, and while you basically just lose any expansions you might have wanted to take. Magical goes for. They're hopefully for them final push. What they hope to be the final push. Hydraulics joining them. The forces they can spare from the cross map harassment. And that's it's contending with an entire plateau set up with all the all the siege moss you could ever ask for. And really no free way in. Like this is this plateau is it's blocked off. Yeah. 
there isn't really a path back into that plateau. Like, it's, it's gonna just be hydraulic and magical, requiring the use of all of this map control they've gotten, all of these expansions they've taken, to a trench warfare gr meat grinder their way up... Well, not trench warfare, meat grinder their way up this hill. But if they take that hill, it's over. That's all they need to take, is the one hill. So hey, is the hill you're gonna choose to die on? I guess make it one that counts. Which they're looking to plan to do. Going for the push. First setup coming in here. It's not going to be enough. Not Don't have the units to break this. The behemoths are doing okay. Unless they can go around the side and start taking on the tech, it's not going to really work. Walter team starting to get out of position. Some of the behemoths getting rooted. Major loss for Light Forger. Hydraulics. Or magical more so coming around the side, able to just wipe rooting once again, wiping out even more of these behemoths. Life Forger with the Red Harvest to at least m mitigate some of the losses. Hydraulics and magical. Regrouping. Forcing out their opponents. Another Red Harvest comes in. Again, tries to mitigate the losses, but the fact that they're out of position. Light Forger losing a significant chunk of their army. Hydraulics and Magical, this is the perfect position for them! Light Forger throws in the towel! Santa still hold up in the base! What do they have in mind? They're not GGing quite yet. What are they... What are they planning on doing? Like, Light Forger got baited. They got baited hard to get out of that protective base. It's exactly what Hydraulics and Magical wanted. But... What is Santa gonna like? What could they have otherwise done? And what now can Santa do? Santa went for the casters. They don't even have air units. But no, they're going for it. Santa's not giving up. Santa is not gonna fall like this. Taking the their allies or well former allies base. I mean, they're gonna mine out pretty soon. Even like that base is mined out. That's just no reason. Why did Santa build that? That's a complete waste. They're totally mined out. Well, all they have are blood plagues. So, not blood plagues, rather. All they have are birthing storms, and birthing storms, I guess, are all they think they need. I mean, to be fair, birthing storm is pretty scary. But magical and hydraulics, just you know, regroup, get around, find like honestly, they don't even need to attack the front lines. They're mostly behemoths. Just go around the side. Why does no one go around the side? Like I'm really starting to wonder. Is there, is there like an issue? Like are Aryans not able to fly over cliffs? This build, I'm pretty sure they're able to fly over cliffs. This build. Yeah, we see that one right there. It's it's flying over a cliff. Why is no one? Why is everyone attacking with air units up the main path? Sorry, I don't mean to be critical. It's just like you have units that ignore terrain. Ignore the terrain. Break the production line or break the defense line from the flank. Like, if you're going from the directly in front, you have a dozen siege monsters to contend with. If you're going from the flank, you have two or three at a time. It's way easier. I just, I've noticed that today a lot. And I, I hate to be super critical, but I, I just... Yeah. Flanking is an important maneuver in life as in strategy games. Like we're seeing a lot of strong defenses this tournament that Larn contains and these last-ditch defenses, which, if you just come in from the side with units that can dislodge, you can break the flank. Or you can break the defenses. Just flank the defenses. Or, you know... Throw everything into a meat grinder. I guess that works too. And I realize I'm seeing the whole thing, but it's like, you know, some, you know that's what the flying teapots are for. Well, regardless, behemoths can go in the frontal assault, and enough of them is enough of them. It off the great hunt, killing all the Walter team's sight vi or vision range. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Once. Santa's convinced the game is over. That'll be it for Break the Game Weekly number Alpha Edition number 23. And yeah, Santa 
Santa don't have much left. They don't have anything left, for that matter. In fact, they are desperately trying to rebuild everything, and they are not going to manage. Everything is just going to die. And there we go! Magical Hydraulics taking it 3 to nothing against the Walter team to win the tournament. Congratulations to Magical and Hydraulics for winning, especially considering how much that was, like, kind of just going on forever about that. But yeah, congratulations on the winning. 3-0 Magical Hydraulics. Yeah, that is that. So... Well, thank you to all the people who joined today, who played. Congratulations again to Magical Hydraulics to, for getting first place, and congratulations to the Walls team, Lightforger and Santa, this week for getting second, and then for Dragon Zoo for third place. Sorry, Golden Entropy. I realized part of that was because Mr. Cream forgot to install early, but yeah, do. Again, make sure that when you want to play, they just, just pop into the client, make sure it installs the night before. I do encourage people to join the tournament, by the way. Like, there's a Discord link in the chat right now. So do join the tournament if you're interested. Because it's a good time. Just make sure you install the game first. Like, don't... Don't leave it hanging. But yeah, just make sure you install the game first. And other than that... Thank you to... I mean, Seamus for organizing it. If they weren't able to hear... Here, able to do the adminning. They are apparently on like away and they have a cat now which is good good stuff anyway other than that thank you to all of you for watching and until next time have a good night everyone